right. What do we feel like tonight, Mike? Feeling great. It's feeling great. Feeling Welcome great. to the Feeling Great Show. If you're not feeling great, you should turn this off. That's right. If you're not feeling great, turn around, go back home, because work doesn't want you. Exactly. It's Roast Mortem, and we want you. Okay? Yeah! Yeah! Hello, welcome to Roast Mortem. My name is Tom. I'm Travis. And I'm Mike. And tonight, we are joined by Andrew. Hey, how's it going, guys? What up, Andrew? Andrew, thank you for joining us very much. Uh, so, tell us about yourself before we dive into the show as usual. Uh, we don't usually have guests on, but we're changing things up a bit on the show, are we not, boys? I yeah. I suppose, yeah. Yeah, well, well, yeah. Okay, Andrew, tell us about yourself. Well, I mean, you know, big thing right off the top, I guess most people jump to for this show would be, hey, I'm from Canada. So, you know, get those jokes out while you can. Oh, <laughs> hey, hey, what's this all about? Poutine. Would you prefer I speak with a Canadian accent there than to make it a little easier for you to understand me? You know, <laughs> you know as someone who watches television, yes, I'd probably like you more. <laughs> you mean I don't sound American when I speak normally? You know, is it a little different? You have a charming voice. <laughs> You have a great so, so have a charming a video- voice. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, we're doing a video chat, and he's just stuffing his face with poutine right now, just constantly. And I'm jealous. As uh, all right, so there's a thing. I'm actually a horrible Canadian because I don't like poutine. What? It's, oh, my <laughs> God. It's, okay, it's a weird thing with me. I don't know. Cheese and me don't get along, and it's not a lactose thing. It's a matter of the texture. I can't get over it. It just makes me gag a lot of the time, so mm. me and poutine don't mix. I've been called oh. out on that a lot. <laughs> oh, man. Well, we don't want to beat a dead horse here, but also, have you tried yeah. the horse poutine? Horse poutine? <laughs> yeah. Well, That's you know, new. I've never heard of that. Horse we'll go poutine. over it after the show. It's, it's got horse oh, cool. bits in it. Ooh. Yeah, and uh, mm. Andrew, you are a leathersmith as well. You want to tell us a little bit about your wares and what you make? And Yeah, um, ranges. Mostly I've done like custom commissions for people, uh, yourself included, Travis. I, did, um, I got a sweet-ass done- watch. Yeah. Oh, I hope it's holding up for you. I mean, you told me to make it the most sweat resistant band possible, and I I did my best on that. So I'm, hopefully that I'm a sweaty out for boy. You. It's still holding up. I'm a very sweaty boy. I'm I'm greasy, Excellent. I'm sweaty. Excellent. Yeah, no, so I've done a lot of commission work. It's mostly just, you know, people contact me and say, Hey, I want this thing made and I'll do my best to do it. And anything between, you know, belts, watch bands, bags, custom cases, stuff like that. Oh wow. Uh hoping over time to expand it from there, but you know, we'll see where it goes since I have to work a day job at the same time, so I don't always have the time to dedicate to it. But uh work in progress, we'll see. <laughs> well, you do some excellent work, I must say. Your Instagram is popping. Ah, thank you. Thank you. (laughs) Of course. Now, uh, down to business, though. Uh, How was your week, Andrew? Oh, okay. Well, starting, I mean, my day job, so I work in security primarily, so you can imagine the crap that I deal with on a day-to-day basis. Thankfully, this week wasn't too bad. Okay. A couple of minor annoyances, nothing major. I didn't have to do any CPR or anything. Uh, but no, this, this weekend was actually really good. We, uh, I went with, uh, Gabby or Fennec, I guess I'll call her. Cause I realize you know, you also have Gabby in your situation there. So, uh, um, we went to, uh, yes, exactly. We went to a uh, campground with some friends, just a uh, little glamp out, you know, nothing, not real deep woods camping or anything. And we just kind of hung out for the weekend for the past couple of days, just got drunk and sat around the fire and just had a good time, you know? So that was pretty relaxing. That's beautiful. Really I'm assuming time. there were some beans mm-hmm. in the mix. Uh, not as far as I know, but, you know. Oof. We'll... <laughs> Oof. No no beans beans cooking, so. All right. Well, oh. no beans. See, that's what that's... It is. It's glamping. Glamping. So, you know, it's not like, you know, roughness. So we had, you know, stove, like the grills and hot dogs and, and stuff, stuff like, like that. that. So, You're yeah. All... Yeah, thirty somethings millennials eating avocado toast in the woods and yeah. crying about your debt. I, <laughs> I would die about my without my avocado. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wouldn't we uh, all also you said security. Do you have are you like the hitmans? Do you have the barcode on the back of your neck? You people's necks <laughs> I mean the, the hair just grew back in, I guess, but oh, you know. Okay. All right, cool. <laughs> no, 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 but uh, no, it's I, were, I do mall security primarily, so, you know, I've been called Paul Blurt Mall Cop as many times as I can remember, so... Oh, damn. You ever tackle uh, anyone or, like, take someone down? Yeah, I've had to perform a few arrests. Oh, hell yeah. You know, assisted in a, in a great number of them, but uh, it's mostly just, you know, crazy people, crackheads, stuff yeah. like that, so... Well, tonight's like, subject, oh, tonight subject is a crazy person, so that's good. Yeah, perfect. Oh. <laughs> um, in. Right, so speaking of which... Um, 
w- there's more weeks to be had here. Um, Mike, how was your week? It was good. Yeah? Uh, I had the week off this week. Did you really? Yeah, I had the week off. Why didn't you come over? I don't, wanna, I don't like bothering people. That's like my big thing. Damn. I don't know. I really just... Uh, I had to have... Huh? You go to Cancun, Mike? I went to the beach for one day. I went by myself because I was like, uh, no one else is going to go because... I don't know, everyone's probably working. You left your shirt on. I did. But I went into the water, and I was like, oh, this is awesome. No one's swimming in the water. And I was swimming and shit, and this fucking lifeguard's like yelling at me at the, from the beach. Right. Like whistling at me. That was, I don't know. That's pretty boring my week. I don't know. I sang, was- <laughs> I sang Creed at a contest. I like hijacked a microphone and sang Creed. That's that's fun. That was yeah, pretty show me that cringe. Uh, oh, Mike, yeah. Mike, and Cat called at the beach. Okay, yeah. So uh, how was your week? What, terrible what week. was the guy yelling at you for? <laughs> oh, I was swimming where like there's like no lifeguards there, so like I was in like a dangerous area. But I was like, it's a fun, like, just a guy me. going. I can't help you. Yeah, I was like, yeah. there's no <laughs> signs. Yeah, I was like, eat my shark is whatever. It's a cool way to go out. I mean, it would suck if I survived and like listen, missing half my body or some shit, but. Well, yeah. He just would be looking much. on like he wasn't in my zone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> my yeah. goodness. I would have been fine. But yeah, I had a boring Tom. week, I guess. Yeah. Yes. Week. Week. All right. Um, week. So I might be a little drowsy today as I am finally uh, in the Bide Scouts as I have taken my vaccine, but solely for the purpose of seeing a Mexican stripper. And What? Respect. Yeah. I'm trying to see this Mexican stripper. And I'm in a place in Brooklyn doing this, and I need to have the vaccine card to get in. And uh, they have this Excelsior pass. You need to have that. So I was like, fuck it. I'm not going to hold out. I'm, I'm going to stop being that guy now, and I'm going to be a worse guy and get the damn J&J because I don't have time to go twice. So that's the week. I've been laying down a lot, and now I'm going to drink and see what it does to my body. I think I mentioned this during the pre-show as I ran around uh, like an idiot, as I do every time. But here I am. I'm one of you now. Welcome, Tom. Tom, thank you. It, is Fauci did Fau, is Fauci providing you with the Mexican stripper? Is that why you're getting it? Or what? Well, no, no. Look, I just got fouched up. You know, I, I joined the Bide Scouts, and I got f- fouched up. And now I'm going to write about it in a book later. And, uh, you know, no one cares. You know, everyone has this story. And maybe I'll get a lawsuit in 20 years. Who knows? Maybe I'll go, what, what am I going to lose? Half my brain first before I get the lawsuit? I mean, still what? got money. Maybe I'll just get bit by a shark and claim that it was because of the vaccine. You could do that, too. I am looking for a reason to be angry about this. That, Truly. That's how they should have distributed it. They should have replaced every shark's teeth with vials and syringes of uh, vaccine. Right. Then- yeah, but then only... Only the surfers will be taken care of then. It's true. No, you put the babies in the water. You just throw everyone in the ocean. You baptize and... them at the same time. Yeah. You yeah. are baptized. Yeah. COVID yeah. free. Yeah. Swim back to shore now. Swimming away. Uh, so anyway, <laughs> I that, I guess that's my week. Travis, um, thanks for stealing my thunder there. Yeah, well, you know, that's how I do I don't it. care I about your like week. I don't care about your week this week. I like to slip in, dog. Part of me being uh, vaccinated is that I am short-tempered. Well, so you know what, I, I don't want to hear about your week. Tom, you just got backdoored. Oh. I just I hacked and I went into your back door and I was like, how was your week first? I feel hacked. But anyway, if anyone wants to hear about my week. How was your week, Travis? Thanks, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> my week. <laughs> my week has been full of working. I worked for 40 hours straight the other day. Oh, she is, dude. That was stupid. And yeah, I mean. Just so sit in front of a computer. I've been doing a lot of research. Uh, yeah, I mean, forty hours nonstop. Wow. That, that's no exciting. Breaks. We should move on with the show. Y- yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no breaks. I was gonna Travis. say what? What land did you working forty hours straight? That seems you know, a little pee breaks. Excessive. Probably volunteering. Oh, I mean, I did take. Oh, I well, I, I, I urined myself on my gaming chair. Oh, you're a savage. Um, that's always go to gamer. work. It depends. Yep. 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 I'm going to start Tom, doing it, actually. Who, Travis. Who, who's on the chopping block here? Because oh, no one God. wants to hear about my 40-hour work week. I do. No. No one wants to hear about any of this crap. They're here to learn. We know that. That's why the show does so well. Uh, tonight, on the chopping block, as we like to call it, is Frederick Nietzsche. Okay? You guys know about him? Yes. Yeah, very familiar in his work. Right. Mike has read all of his work. Backwards and frontwards. Right. Dude, what's your favorite one? My, 
Uh, that's too many to you know pick out one that's single. That's the right right answer. <laughs> Dude, like, I'm, like, so into Nietzsche, like, I don't know, man. I was into it before you guys were, though, so. Yeah, no, no, I don't know about that, Mike. I think I was in it before. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, you're fucking The hipster cool. battle begins. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really? Yeah. I don't think that hipsters would really like this guy if they understood anything about him. He's not the worst guy we've roasted, but he's certainly uh, stupid, ah. uh, to be frank. Now, this is a big-brained boy who turned the philosophy world on its head with his hot takes on religion, society, and morality, all that fun shit. His body of work is controversial, not just because of the brash and bold ideas, but also because of the poor interpretations by dickheads around the world. So a lot of people who quote Nietzsche have no idea what the context is. And then once you read the, the context, you're either like, this is profound or this is some dumbass shit. Truly. I spent a lot of time with Nietzsche this week, and that's that was my vaccine, if you understand. I'm I was ready to go. Oh, I'm interested. Uh, what but like Tom, are you the Uber mensch? Well, I'm working on it. You're getting there? I'm gonna one day I will be. Um I think right now textbook definition Uber mensch is Jeff is Bezos. Oh, it's just a really rich person? Yeah, I don't think that like people understand that Nietzsche, while he wasn't like hardcore into the capitalist system, he was into wealth. He he honored wealth. He thought that was like a morality that needs to be um, cherished. Like people who are richer than you have done better, they've and they're smarter more. than you. Yeah. So shut up. That's the idea. Some, that is some it's of almost Nietzsche. like a class system uh, kind of a thing. Yeah, not that like he was into. The class thing. He's just like really. You can't like, talk don't, shit don't on my shit, stuff. Don't don't shit on people because they have a lot more yeah. money than you. They just did it better than you, right? And um, you jealous, see me kind of. if you see me riding two jet skis down the Delaware with my pee pee out. <laughs> I got a bandana in my hair and I'm chugging tequila. I'm better than you. Yeah, Uber and I'm like Travis is such a fucking loser. You've made it. You have to be careful down the <laughs> Delaware because it's like. <laughs> the Delaware is like a, an inch foot at some parts, so you gotta be careful. Uh, with Dude, I'll kick flip it. <laughs> nice kick flip. All right. So Nietzsche, Frederick <laughs> Nietzsche, born October fifteenth, eighteen forty four, in Leipzig, Saxony, to Lutheran pastor Carl Ludwig Nietzsche and professional woman Francisca Nietzsche. Uh, he had two siblings, a sister named Elizabeth, who uh, later is a pain in the ass in our story, and a Brother named Ludwig, and uh, that guy died. Anyway, in <laughs> 1849, right. when was Friedrich quick. was five, his dad passed away, so the family moved in with his paternal grandmother and his two hot and holy German aunts. Oh, hell yeah. Ooh. Ha. Oh, baby! Ladies. <laughs> no, it wasn't like that at all. They were no fun. Was, oh. was one of them Gretchen oh, and the other one like Gertrude or Helga or something like that? Uh, I actually don't know their names. I forgot to write them down because they're not like a huge part of the story. Um, uh, well, well, let's go with Gertrude and Helga, and they both shit in each other's mouths. I like it. I like that too. Yeah. I mean, good visual, Travis. So you know how yeah. I just always got to keep it. Yeah. Always got to keep it classy there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know. Yeah, you gotta. You gotta. I'm just trying it's to be real German. here. A wiener schnitzel. Right. Yeah. You know, it's a lot of casing talk. Okay. He talks about types of casings. Now, you remember how I mentioned his brother died? Well, that was now in the story. He was very young. Uh, that's what happens back then in the 1850s. How'd he they die? just die. He's just a child. Like a disease or some shit. He was like two, and they go, uh, he's dead now. Natural causes. Exactly. Died of child syndrome. Right. So <laughs> now with um, the father and the brother dead, Nietzsche is surrounded by a bunch of holy ladies who spoke the truth of God at him. Not necessarily with him, but at him. So I'm sure this had nothing to do with his mental stability later on. I'm sure that that was a fluke. If you catch my drift. Or like beating the shit out of him or something like that. Or like, I just you can't being, masturbate, like, you're going to hell. No, you're just being surrounded by like three older women who are just yelling about God. Uh, uh, you know, yeah, it gets old after like a while. Every, every opportunity. Yeah. You know, it's, it's like, <laughs> hey, uh, learn how to tie your shoes. Okay. Or else, God. <laughs> Going to hell. Yeah, but Tom. Yeah. God. Bible. God. Bible. 
I it mean, they really the believed that shit back then. Dude, it says in the Brobel to believe in yourself and carry a big stick and they walk TV back with then. Jesus. It's fine. Look, I, I, I don't uh, I don't care because I'm not him. So this is Nietzsche's problem, if you know what I mean. Right. Okay, Nietzsche was fully capable of making friends as a kid. He had a few. One of them who he grew up with was, was uh, Paul Dusen. Uh, he's another well-known philosopher and writer. And he tended to be more of a loner. So the two of these loners got together for a nice chunk of their life. Nietzsche uh, kept his company sparse. At age 13, he went to a private boarding school for kids called Schultforta. Now, this is a top Protestant learning establishment, which did further sculpt his brain into the old Christian shit. Now, a lot of people know that Nietzsche's not that into... Religion. God, you know, yeah. we, we know him for the God is dead quote, which, mm-hmm. you know, that's rough, I guess, if you're into that. It's pretty punk rock of him. But up until like the age 13, 14, he was in it. He was like, God is shit. Yeah. God is awesome. And they even uh, his family even called him the little preacher because he started Ooh. regurgitating. Well, what did God do to him that he had to die? You know, I mean, there's got to be something. Well. By age 18, Nietzsche starts having these long, hard thinks, probably with other hard things, but it was a long, hard think, right? Yeah. He questions his beliefs. His beliefs, he starts questioning them, the whole societal norms. And unlike Lori Laughlin's daughter, Nietzsche wanted to think. That's a deep Uh, cut from two years ago. That was a very oh, I, and I get it now. Do you get that joke? Full house. It's good, right? Yeah. It's a good joke. Remember that scandal? That's a good mom right there trying yeah. to get your kid in a good school. Yeah, but that, that girl was retarded. She <laughs> actually <laughs> was. I would have just, just taken like, the I money. Just she should have bought so Bitcoin right. with it. What the fuck she should have bought Bitcoin. Thinking? That was a good time to buy it, too. I, yeah. I mean, have you ever been like mid-jerk off, you know, mid-wank, and yeah. you've thought, man, I hope no one's watching me. Oh you yeah, know. bro! Like yeah, ancestors right? so or some then, shit. Oh, like you're season. like you're like grandma, grandma, or my grandpa's <laughs> like, damn, well, you're Andrew, fucking you, doing this. <laughs> Andrew, you said, Andrew, you say God sees all of your mid wank. You're like, man, maybe he's dead. Maybe he's dead. Or maybe he's enjoying the show. You never know. That too. Right. Like, who's watching me right now? Yeah, my ghost yeah. is watching me right now, getting off on this. I mean, he could be double booked. He could be out taking care of something else. And he's yeah, like, ah, I missed him jerking off again. Fuck. Yeah, a lot of people stroking yeah. it all at once. Yeah. I'm sure he records each individual one and plays it back later at his convenience. Oh, he's got a DVR? Right. Yeah. Yeah, it's a PPR. <laughs> now, at age 19, PPR. at age 19, he attended University of Bonn. Okay? Uh, this is... Wait, no, Bonn. Where the hell was Bonn again? It's either in Switzerland or Germany. I forgot to write this down. Uh, Bonn, but- yes, 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 yes. Bond. Yeah, we could assume it's one of those because they like chocolate, both of them. Against his <laughs> own judgment, he uh, set out to be a pastor. Okay, Fun. he's still on the fence about this God thing because he had just turned eighteen and started, you know, pulling his meat. But uh, all he knew was pastor <laughs> stuff. So his family pushed him in that direction as his father was a pastor and his father's father was a pastor. And uh, you know, it's it was cushy back then. It seemed to make sense for everyone else in the room, but he knew it wasn't gonna last. Okay. Oh, shit. When he arrived at Bonn with his friend Paul Dusen, that I remember, I, re- I remember I said that before. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why I said that like that. Mr. But, uh, Dusen. <laughs> we're in this together. Uh, something clicked in him and he became very social. The two of them joined the frat house called Franconia and began drinking heavily. And Nietzsche even dueled someone once. Oh. Yeah. Like a sword? Oh, with a gun. Like what kind of duel are we talking here? Uh, It's a sword, and I think it was with them epe rules. Uh, As Travis, I think you clarified what an epe rule was. Yeah, Uh, all you got to do is give them a period anywhere on their body. Right. (laughs) Oh, one Uh, tap? And then the duel's over. Yeah. Even, like, on the foot, like, some bullshit? Like, I'm going to tap you on the foot? Oh, wow. Like a toe period. Yeah. No, that... Oh, I was just going to say, I actually used to do uh, sword fencing as well. So, yeah, epe would be any point on the epe body hit. where foil would be direct on one of the six points of the torso. So, ah. if it was epe rules, they could just scratch his finger and it's like, ah, you win. Wow. What right. you fence? Wow. Wow. What do you fence? Because Mike is the only person who hasn't fenced. Wow. What Don't, a weird uh, podcast. I, I, You're I, the I, only person who hasn't fenced here. I've like, yeah. n- usually no one fences. 
I just hit each other with like bats. I know, before. like no uh, one does it anymore. <laughs> I've done that shit. <laughs> Use like wiffle ball. That's bats. street fencing. <laughs> yeah, street <laughs> yeah. fencing. Like, like golf that. clubs and yeah. stuff. Yeah, we're out for a little street yeah. fencing. So he did lose his duel. He got a little nick on the nose, right in the bridge. So he actually, uh, that's pretty lo- close there to an eye. Yeah, or, I, or, I call or, that as a hit. They don't wear the mask back then, too. They didn't have like the little beehive mask. Back then, they were drinking, they were partying, they were going, ah. That's also when they did the five finger fillet thing, too. Or that was their good game back in the day. I, I don't know if Nietzsche was into that, oh. uh, but he could have been. Well, I mean, who doesn't like playing with sharp shit when they're drunk? I mean, I mean, it's fun. Parties where we're throwing, throwing knives. I'm sure you've been there, Andrew, throwing fucking shit and breaking you know. stuff's a lot of fun too. Oh yeah, I you get a couple of drinks in me, and I'll start spinning whatever sharp object is around me. You know, that's what we do. <laughs> Such confidence in that statement. <laughs> this is what we do. <laughs> All right, so. His party lifestyle was crucial at this point, okay? He's like, I needed, yeah. well, he feels like he needed to uh, go through this, what he would call like a a, a, a bastardous behavior. Uh, That's not the right word. But anyway, he wanted to live the life of a heathen for a bit to experience it because his philosophy later on is like, all that stuff's bad. I needed to know how to do it, though, just for research, okay? (laughs) This is during the... This is the time well, that's he, how you become an expert. Yeah, right. So this is around the time he develops his God is dead philosophy. Uh, he's not the first philosopher to use the similar or s- same phrasing, for that matter. Um, Philip Manglander, shortly before Nietzsche, took the phrase God is dead, and it appears in his hymn. Um, oh, excuse me. No, I worded that wrong. Um, he, he had that phrase in one of his books. And then this gentleman, uh, Johann von Ritz wrote a hymn with the term God is dead and had his own spin on it. So Nietzsche is not the first guy to propose this. Yeah. Um, what do they mean know, by that, though? Well, it's this idea of him being a living thing. It's not that like it's not like, hey, God was alive and now he's dead. It's just like how we observe God is like utterly oh, useless. Oh, so true. OK. Or our attention to what I don't know. His yeah, views on morality aren't... changed drastically. Aren't hymns like phone calls to God, like a whole bunch of people like, yo, dog, we're singing about you. Uh, get hard. Like, why would you say you're dead to God? Well, not all hymns are for God, per se. Some of them are like yeah. some of them are like choral mass things. And I think it's the idea that like this wasn't an anti-Christian sentiment. This is like God is dead because we're so godless. Alive. Well, yeah, I know. We saw him. He's up on the pike over there on the fucking on the telephone pole. Yeah. Well, that's Roman Jesus, his He's son. Dead. That's that's his yeah, son. But whatever. You're a heathen. The you're, same guy. You're, you're a heathen. OK, you're, you're I'm stroking it right now. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> you start... can't see my hands. I don't want to see your hands. <laughs> now, he starts getting very edgy around this time, as you can imagine, from a child who's going around saying God is dead uh, he at home. He, every, anytime he went home, he has spiky hair, very spiky. Um, he starts listening to Power Man 5000. He stops taking communion. He refuses to step into a church at a certain point. And uh, yeah, family's like, um, what? You know, what? because they like, just, they don't get it. That like, shit doesn't make any sense. Yeah, I'm not going to this place. Right. So he drops out of Bonn University and transfers over to, let's, uh, Leipzig University to what? study philology, which is the study of language in oral and written history. Okay, if you Wait, didn't know that f- one, Phil philology, philology. Yes. Well, that's obviously named after Doctor Phil. Yes, he's a great thinking. communicator. He is a great communicator. He knows how to use yeah. words. He knows how to help Did people. Did you know that God is dead? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, Doctor Phil's mustache is nothing compared to Nietzsche's mustache, by the way. If you don't... Oh, it's pretty glorious. Yeah. Nietzsche's yeah, mustache is, is like... Mo- it's like half of his face. Yeah, I Google this. This thing. is the boss mode. I think this is the best mustache that we've ever roasted. Yeah, probably. Also, Mike, I noticed you went for your phone to grab this, so while we're on the topic, uh, his name does oh. not look like it would be pronounced Nietzsche. Yeah, Check yeah. that name out. Oh, yeah, I just typed in... Like, I got like a weird website. I typed Nietzsche into Google. <laughs> How'd you spell it? <laughs> N-I-like-C-H-E. Yeah, Nietzsche. see, it's different and weird. 
N I E T Z. There we go. Right. It oh, does. Damn, son. Yeah, that's pretty good, right? He's got like a fucking like a. He's got two bangs on his fucking upper lip. He's got little I girl's mean, hair on. Yeah. Him. What the fuck? I mean, mustache. Right, They're a little right? unkempt, but you know. <laughs> Unkempt, I don't know. I'm just saying maybe I think he's getting too many mustache rides. So I was you know, saying, right? Uh, That's popping out. He's well, kind of got like the, the mustache equivalent of Zoidberg's tentacles. Yeah. Going there. yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's a good way of phrasing it for those of you at home. Uh, Nietzsche was the kind of guy who talked a very large game without stepping foot on the court, if you know what I mean. So what he would do is uh, tell many of his friends. This is not just one person going, oh, yeah, like, all five of his friends, he'd be like, you know, like women, I need at least three of them to be satisfied. Ah, uh, he's I one need, of those guys. Yeah, one of those guys. Uh, he talked a big game, and um, but a lot of his back friends, including Paul, who I just mentioned, was like, yeah, he used to just say that from like when he was seventeen, but it took till twenty one till he lost his V card. He decided he was like, it's time to go. So during a visit to Cologne, he was like, oh, I'm gonna make this happen. Now, by his account of the visit is that he asked a local guide to bring him to a restaurant, but the guide brought him to a brothel. Once inside, Oops. Nietzsche was paralyzed by the lustful ladies grabbing and trying to make a quick buck out of him. Oh, jeez. He regained his wits by walking over to a piano and playing a few chords to calm his nerves. <laughs> yeah. That's how I would do it. So the, the ultimate aphrodisiac. Mm-hmm. So uh, <laughs> he says that he left the brothel his account of the story is extremely questionable. No one really knows the account. This is the only one we know. We just th- imagine saying, yeah, uh, I went, I-, I popped into a cab and I asked him to take me to, to Friday's and he dumped me off at Larry Quarters. Flint's. <laughs> and I had to go in there and take take the wheelchair chairs up, uh, stairs up there. And either way, we, he's full of shit. Um, next time, next time I'm at the bar and I'm trying to like you know impress people, I'm just gonna go over the piano, calm myself by playing. That's good. I play some heart and yeah. soul. I just imagine him huddled in a corner, like shivering and calling for his mom or something like that. It's like, oh god, so many women. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. It seems like it's weird that he even writes about this at all. Yeah, I keep it uh, to myself. Like I can't believe that I was trying to go somewhere and then i ended up coming and to (laughs) me like just don't write it down it's fine i mean and also if he says god is dead who the hell matters yeah well it doesn't matter to god that's for sure yeah he's dead maybe he was there right god was still watching maybe yeah could have very well been he did talk a big game right you said tom Mm -hmm. Mm. he did talk that big game i mean Uh, god could god could be like undead like cthulhu right i don't know Uh, god you know could, well, I, I don't know. That yeah, God lives in the ocean. Oh, yeah, we roasted real. that asshole. Yeah, he, we roasted that asshole. He's not really. He's, yeah, I don't believe in him. But that's just me. Anyway, after Nietzsche's first erotic caper in Cologne, he began these type of visits regularly uh, all over Litzbeg and uh, wherever else he was staying. He liked to travel a lot. He didn't have a permanent residence anywhere. Um, Tom, was did all those times he end up did he explain it like, oh, I was trying to go to Buffalo Wild Wings and I showed up at this brothel like every time? Like, oh, whoa, why do they right. keep doing this? And I hated going there. It was Sir, the worst you place. Keep showing up to the same one. I was locked in the room and the only key I had was my penis. So I had to use it. <laughs> yeah, I keep finding myself back in the same place. Well, yeah. he, he did it enough. Well, as you would expect, uh, this I would I want to be... go to that escape the room place. Yeah, me saying. too. There's Don't... a lady I'd be more in impressed room. by that. Yeah, how do you get out? I don't know. You got to be, <laughs> while you're scared, you have to get hard. Yeah, and, that's um, easy. It's not going to happen. It is easy. You, you can no, get. No, it's pretty easy. Yeah. yeah. Damn. Hey, some people get turned on by fear, <laughs> so maybe he was the type. I mean, yeah, Tom, that's, where, you're, you're, that's where your adrenaline kicks in is when you're hard. That's if Mine goes in my body so I can get more muscle uh, and work my way well, out of situations. I got a third leg to kick at someone. That's nice. There you go. He goes Tom, from an Audi ne- to an innie. Yeah, Tom, yeah. you never heard of the old phrase, uh, flight or fuck? No. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. Classic. Maybe you didn't read enough Nietzsche. Yeah, no, right. I didn't. I, well, Tom's you know, I could, to be honest with you, I couldn't make it through enough Nietzsche. <laughs> I, I, there's I, a lot. I, 
I spent a good amount of time the past two days listening to uh, Thus Spake Zarathustra. And oh my goodness, what a mad, insane journey of garbage that book is. Like, I, I couldn't do it. We're, we'll get into the philosophy later. I yeah, feel like I want to yeah. get through his life and then we could do our thing. Um, we can get dark, if, bro. If that's our thing. All right. So anyway, so as you can imagine, when you are hopping from city to city, having sex with dirty, dirty women, you're going to get a little case of syphilis. Am I right? Good old stuff. Big ass. It makes you really creative. Just a though. wee bit. So creative. So there's many sources contesting this diagnosis, claiming that the Nazis made up this diagnosis to smear Nietzsche later, but the Nazis used Nietzsche all the time out of context to propagate their cause. So which one is it? I don't fucking know. Uh, but there's enough people saying, oh, he doesn't have syphilis. It's the 1800s. If you didn't have syphilis and you were banging that many whores, then you're a golden god. We all know this. And, and yeah. it's, or you have a, or you have one of those cocks that uh, the trans people use that you can throw away. They had the sheep condoms back then, though, right? Right. Sheepskin condoms. Right. One of those. He's but, probably using one of those jimmies. I think those are pretty porous. What does that mean? Like bad? Yes. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> bad. yeah, they ain't great. Trust yeah, me, it, I know it, skins. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is a skin daddy. All right. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, Andrew, you make leather condoms. From cow hides, right? <laughs> now, oh. those would be a little thick and uncomfortable, however. Reusable, though. <laughs> Just <laughs> wash them out. Andrew, I, very I don't very difficult fe- to wash. Oh. I don't want to feel anything. A little dry in the sun. <laughs> I want to pretend I'm in the other room. <laughs> you just want to pretend you're inside the cow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, you know. Do you ever you get like... Uh, do you ever, actually, speaking of being gross, when you're dealing with like procuring certain leathers do you is there like a special on the buttholes and stuff is there a thing you can do actually I, to be honest i can't say i've ever come across a butthole but you know <laughs> okay wait you didn't yeah. make my watch strip out of butthole leather i asked specifically no oh, no sure. i thought oh sorry i made that mistake i thought you oh. meant foreskin but you know <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> wow even more premium <laughs> there you go top quality well i'm not a jewish cow <laughs> anyway uh, uh right so where were we so nietzsche he was um i just getting this out of the way as i mentioned the nazis like some some claim that the nazis used that diagnosis to smear him but no that's not true he most certainly had syphilis uh but for the record nietzsche was extremely anti-racism and he hated anti-semites uh he thought that the homogeny of the world should be propagated and that's fine. I think that's par for the course. Uh, we can all agree that uh, it doesn't matter who you put uh, your thing in there with. If yeah. you know what I mean. Yeah. So he we goes all over... get syphilis in the at in the end. Exactly. Right. You know? right. So yeah, the Nazis misuse his uh, Ubermensch thing. We could talk about that later. Uh, either way, he had syphilis, and why not? That just makes you crazy, right? It just gets you like all like weird and shit. Well, it does take time. It it doesn't affect people. Right away, it's like slow. It always hits your brain. Like you remember when uh, eats your brain, we did right, Capone babe? on the show? Yeah, yeah. And how he was just retarded. He got more retardeder by syphilis. Yeah. Also, Bo Brummel, Brummel. We did that one, and that guy just like slowly got fucking crazier and crazier. Right. Um, don't uh, don't quote me on this one, but I'm pretty sure I heard something about Blackbeard having the same situation, which is why he went from being a fairly level headed sailor to being like such an eccentric over the top pirate that was notorious for ridiculous things. Oh, that would well, make well, sense. Yeah, if you're going to be a pirate and you're going to be banging around yeah. manatees and shit, manatees naturally are born with syphilis. So. Well, that might be uh, up for contention, <laughs> but either way. Um, now you don't have to worry about it. I have yeah, a friend who safe. got syphilis and he said it was totally worth it because it, they, you can cure it now. He said <laughs> yeah. it was a great time when he just had to go pay $60 at the doctor. It's totally um, safe to bang manatees nowadays. Right. Back then, on the other hand, once you start seeing those little bubbles on your penis, Uh-oh. you go to the doctor, they go, you're going to go crazy now. Uh, it, so, so a lot of times they wouldn't really? even tell people because it hurt. It hurt their feelings. Here's some cigarettes. Feel better. Yeah. Here's well, no, they give you mercury. Reds. <laughs> yeah. Well, they give you mercury, which also makes you go insane. 
Right. That's it's another thing. So make you feel better for Mercury. <laughs> Try to hit you up with that. How was it they administered that? <laughs> uh, right Every... into the pee hole. That's yeah. I was that's born too thinking. late. Yeah, you were yeah. born too late. You were born in the wrong century, kid. Lobotomies and fucking that was a little bit before, but lobotomies. Could, but... could you imagine? Could you imagine <laughs> getting your syphilis dose right into the pee hole and then coming or pissing and just like putting a fucking hole in the wall? I don't want to think that about that. That's rather metal. disgusting. You know That's pretty disgusting. <laughs> that would be forever ingrained in my head. But I'd be like, yeah. "Why well, I, I did that?" <laughs> well, <Right>? I don't. <laughs> <laughs> now I gotta fix the fucking just wall. Imagine like a. A hydro-powered sniper rifle just... <laughs> yeah. A shotgun for cum. God. <laughs> if you Buck shoot shot, it off... Put if, some of that in there. If you shoot it off at sunset over the harbor, you'll catch a snapper for sure. They love anything that's shiny. Yeah, yeah. Or a raccoon. Or a raccoon, yeah. Uh, let's get back into this. Okay, so this guy had syphilis. We may have even gotten it from a male brothel, believe it or not. Because oh. uh, apparently, Nietzsche... Would dabble in the art of swordplay. No disrespect, oh. but uh, there's also a theory that his syphilis status uh, was something that stopped him from dealing with women because he looked at like women as very separate of the men thing, uh, th- uh, which is it's fine. He wasn't trying to be an asshole about it. He was just like, "You're a woman, I'm a man." He found out he had syphilis and was just like, "I'm just gonna touch men for a while now." Swashbuckling. Uh, Yes. It's like he had a fear of women. Not not necessarily a fear, but maybe a phobia almost. Yeah. I, I think this man had so many principles that like could not actively be applied that he would do things that were like didn't make sense. Like he's like, ah, I found out I got syphilis. Ah can't eat grapes anymore. Well, I better have sex with this guy. Gotta eat the, you know, gotta eat this guy's butt. Well, can you give syphilis to a a man? Yeah, he, definitely. Yeah. There's nothing oh, that so stops what? that, but he's just like, a Using man can excuse? handle it. Oh. No, like, women are frail. Oh, he's one they don't the... need syphilis. True. A he's man, like... he can take it. I have it. I'm fine. I'm sad, but I'm fine. He won't mind if I give it to him. He can only give it to, him, it to another man who can take it. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. He'll, he'll understand where I'm coming from when he has it. Right, exactly. When he show, He's not going to knock on my door and go, what? Uh, Nietzsche. What happened? <laughs> what happened? He's going to go, good day, sir. <laughs> that was really good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you doing anything? You want to go up for some mimosas, bro? Yeah, Nietzsche Bigessi. Yeah. <laughs> but with that being said, uh, that's totally on him. It's fine. He's having fun. That is. Uh, in his early 20s, he found Schopenhauer's book, The World as will and representation, which drives home a principle in philosophy and wonderful uh, wonderment in... Oh, excuse me. I worded that wrong because I'm an idiot. Uh, It drives home this principle that philosophy and wonderment are just the general drive of existence. So um, the only reason that we think... To quickly summarize this book, is the only reason that we think at all and wonder is that Life is melancholy and miserable. So we're looking for other reasons to justify us being here, yada, yada, yada. Just like depressive, sad kid shit. This is Schopenhauer. Um, but make trying to build on that. Right. So he's like, saying. everything sucks. The only thing that we should be doing is being like, y'all good. I'm having a good time. I'm like, y'all, you well, want some syphilis? Yeah. <laughs> it's It's kind of like the outlook that someone has when they're tedious to hang out with like hey man do you want to go fishing i what's guess the point? so maybe yeah but what's but isn't it like what's the point but also if they're like hey i have mess you'd be like uh, all right well, <laughs> that's pleasure the reason i think i can I, I understand this is that when i was younger i had these like you know these are teenagers. these are men of. whose books are still being reflected upon but it only makes sense if you're not out of your mind and you're like between the ages of 15 and 23 yeah. after that, it's like you have to either grow up or you're out of your mind to really follow what's going on here and say this yeah. has any merit. Now I'm oversimplifying that, but we should move along it's and then we like can a, keep chatting about this later. But like, Schopenhauer's oh, ideas. Can I, say, can I make a comment? Yeah, sure. It's kind of like nihilism, early nihilism. Yeah, it, early nihilism exactly. is. Uh, yeah, that's 
Yeah. Spot on, Mike. So that was a big word I knew. You did Good it. Good job, dog. <laughs> I, I, you yeah. know, I'm, I'm so glad that you're showing us these new words. Well, you, I like to do my part sometimes. Yeah, thank you for doing your part on the show. Thank you. He's studying. <laughs> yeah, center, center stage on our new artwork. I know, I'm artwork. blushing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thank you uh, to Andrew's girlfriend Finnick for oh, doing yeah, thank you. great fucking work on that. Yes, she made us look gross, <laughs> and uh, I like that. And it's fun. It's it dope. was a disgusting labor of love. It was absolutely <laughs> incredible to see her do it too. <laughs> She's very talented. Very talented lady. Um, now, Schopenhauer, all that stuff about misery and that crap is the jumping off point for Nietzsche's ideology. Um, it's not just with the unveiling truth of misery, but also with the presentation. Schopenhauer believed that his work was a blessing unto mankind, and Nietzsche later on he believed this doubly so. In 1864, Nietzsche became drinking buddies with German poet Ernst Ortlepp. Excuse me. Who introduced him to... Tom. Yes. The, that whole thing about... I mean, it's super, like, teenage shit. Because, like, you were in a local band that kind of it went a little national. But I feel like local bands, huh, that's they funny. all think that their, sh their shit is... Like, Cutting edge. You know, work you know, it's like, oh, I, my shit is the shit. It's the cutting edge. Well, you have to believe your own shit if you're going to make it. You have to. And that's what makes it so infuriating. Like, when, when you, you meet it. someone yeah. who is, like, the most arrogant piece of garbage and successful at the same time, they're there in that successful point because they are arrogant. Yeah. Which is, you know, if you can stomach that, then it doesn't hurt so much. Yeah. But. Right. But this guy, Ernst Ortlepp, who uh, he introduces him to Richard Wagner, who has popped up twice on the show uh, as a total weenie. Um, you guys remember the uh, Ludwig II of Bavaria? Were you there that episode, yeah. Mike? Yeah. It might have been. No, Wagner was a big part of that. But now we're going to see like a different power dynamic. So Prince, I mean, uh, King Ludwig II of Bavaria he used to like fund all of Ludwig's stuff. He was in love with his music. His music was so fantastic and grand and all that crap. And Ludwig was really into it. So he gave him the money. Now we're having a different power dynamic here where young Nietzsche is looking up to Wagner. He's not being, he, he has nothing to offer him. He just sees him as this rock star, right? So Va the same thing as uh, the, 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 the prince you did, which prince? No, uh, Frederick. Oh, well, no, you mean um, Ludwig. Ludwig, Well, yeah. Ludwig saw him as like a divine being, but he still uh, was the okay. one who was giving him the paycheck. Right, right. I got you. Like, he funds this stuff. He comes up later in the story, too, but he funds all Wagner's shit. And Nietzsche's okay. looking up at him like, oh, my God, this guy is awesome. And the money is great, but he doesn't see the disconnect there. Uh, gotcha. Not just yet. So the reason I bring that up is because Wagner is a big part of Nietzsche, uh, his, his life. He's got, like, two books based on him, basically. Um, so Ernst introduces him to Wagner. They become kind of friendly. And then Wagner goes off. Nietzsche disappears. And then his drinking buddy, Ernst, was found dead with a broken neck a few weeks later. Oh. So uh, that was a fateful connection. We'll get into that in a bit. Nietzsche was then drafted by the Prussian army, where, due to his large mustache, was sent to be part of the cavalry. So riding horses. <laughs> that pays off, I guess. Well, it sounds it, about right. Yeah. Yeah. Is that that's like a mark of you're a good horse boy. Look at that mane you have on your fucking face. What? I mean, shit. I mean, his face. Uh, you got to match the horse. So. Yeah. Right. His face does look like a pussy saddle. It does. Like, it's what just ready to go. Did. So this was not <laughs> not good idea. Not smart at all. As Nietzsche never really rode a horse. In fact, he was very weak his entire life his must like all of his pictures he looks like uh Tough he guy. could he could fuck someone up but he was skin and bones man he was just like this little bitch ass and uh <laughs> within a took week all of, his strength just to hold the mustache up yeah right. he's always leaning back all of his pictures except for later in life when he's a uh, vegetable but we'll get on that uh in a bit so within a week of riding horses around like a champ he fell off and had to be hospitalized for a month uh they made him Lance Corporal for fun, and then he was sent back to Leipzig to resume school. So that was his first 
military stint. Hey, you got promoted. Congrats. Yeah, well, it was promoted like, uh, you're the boss now. I mean, shit. I just fell off a horse and I got promoted. Fuck yeah. Good for you. You know, probably should have been riding camels, dude. They probably should have. It's like if you uh, if you were at the boom, boom, huck jam. Yeah. And you rode down the hill and hurt yourself immediately. And you got paid for it because you got paid and you got the Tony Hawk award. Yeah. I'm I'm chilling, drinking a Mountain Dew later. Right. But then they send you home to live in a trailer park. And that's where I start writing my memoirs. That's right. You (laughs) follow. That's what's going on right now. How many great military leaders literally fell their way to the top? Yeah, George sure. Washington, little foreign gentleman right there. Ah, now back at school, Nietzsche he met up with Wagner again, and the two hit it off. Wagner was his father's age, or Nietzsche's father's age, and he was kind of looking for a father figure. Remember, I said he he died young, and he just had all these annoying women in his life. Uh, w- Wagner also he was also a follower of Schopenhauer. Uh, so this created many points for them to have like intricate jerking off sections, you know, uh, like, you know, hanging out and tugging, circle jerking. Uh, these two men wait, but were Tom, annoying. Were they actually, were they were actually releasing their mercury poisoned penis wads inside of each other? No, I don't think so. I think Wagner was, he was very as, as flamboyant as he was. He was very conservative in his beliefs. Right, men and women. He was very fairy tale. So while he would wear an outfit of all pink with feather boas and stuff like that, it was I fuck women. Yeah, like right. and so I it was and, like, I, it was and like, I do no ass play. It was like John. It was like Elton John when he was lying to everyone. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Pretty much. Yeah. It was well. Elton John's not gay. Uh, Elton John actually he <laughs> he was in the closet for so long that he doesn't even know what a penis looks like now. No, or yeah. a vagina. Well, it's or hard vagina. to see it through such a small keyhole. Yeah. <laughs> Wagner was also a oh I mentioned that already. So uh, Nietzsche was truly in awe of Wagner's lifestyle and charisma, the rock star attitude. It was everything was big and there was swans everywhere, and he did all those um, those big operas and crap. That uh, the, you do the Bavarian the king himself would would pay for. So Nietzsche's social status grew considerably in a short amount of time between him hanging out with Wagner, and then he got a job offer to be the chair of classical philology at the University of Basel in Switzerland, eighteen sixty nine. Good at year. At the age of twenty four, uh, he didn't even have a doctorate yet, but he was such a good student. Now I don't know if I laid this on. Yes, he's stupid. Yes, the things he complains about are fussy, but he's really good at the philology thing specifically because he is a master of the German language. Now, the average German that you meet in the street today probably has an understanding of 75% of the language. Mike, Mike, uh, Mike, you might have an understanding of like 50% of the English language. Uh, and that's pretty high for the South Shore. I'd say 100%. You'd say 100%? Give me a, one, give me a, hard, give me a hard word right now. I guarantee I know Hey, it. Mike, tell me what autodidactic means. You know what? I'll have to get back to you on that one. That's a trick fucking question, you motherfucker. <laughs> Mike, we've Let's talked about... You know what? I know a German word. <laughs> Der Keller. I mean, seller. What? Der Keller. I mean, seller. Oh, uh, right? yeah? Der Keller, right? Ah, uh, Mike, the funny thing is, is we've talked about <laughs> autodidactic so many times on oh, this fucking show. It means like circumcised cock or something. Probably, yeah, that's right. right. Yep. Uh, yep. Either way. I'll, well, let's say 99%. Either <laughs> way, uh, so what I'm trying to illustrate here is that uh, Nietzsche's understanding of the German language was far beyond the average um, citizen. It was far beyond most of his colleagues. He knew every word and knew how to phrase things beautifully. So he was naturally a poet. In these people's eyes, I don't know because I read some of it, and yes, it was translated, but it was stupid. Back then, it was probably fucking gold, right? So he was also thinking of leaving philology in general, but uh, he was trying to do chemistry in Paris. That was his idea, but the offer came up, and he said, "Fuck it, I'm 24. Let me go to Switzerland. They got chocolate. Uh, they might be able to cut my dick off. I don't know." <laughs> It makes me feel jealous about my own life. I'm 25, and this dude's doing a lot, lot more than I'm doing. Yeah, but he has syphilis. That's true. It's a trade-off. Yeah, that's yeah. true. 
Mm-hmm. I mean, I don't know. Maybe I'd take syphilis if I could be like an Elon Musk or a... Yeah, maybe I'll become like, an, like a yeah. famous artist because I'm so crazy. Well, uh, yeah, if you could like really balance your syphilis, like get your syphilis and then get some crayons. And then as soon as the crayons start talking to you, go to the doctor. And then be like, I have yeah. syphilis. Yeah. And they'll be like, well, let me just shoot you up with this Biden administration <laughs> vaccine. And you'll be like, what about my syphilis? And they'll go, well, you're a perfect voter. You don't need it anymore. You're a perfect voter. Don't change anything. Tom, uh, Mike, you need the three S's. Syphilis, Swag. face tattoos, and... Space uh, tattoos. Xanax. Xanax. <laughs> Do you say space tattoos and Xanax? Yes, space tattoos. So what was that space. about? <laughs> what was that about understanding of the human of the English language there? Xanax. You know, I, the English language is fluid. <laughs> it is uh, certainly going that way. Uh, so he did Ooh, it. I learned a new word. I'm not gonna say it on the show. Actually, I can't say it. Why is it hate? No, tell us your big word. It, all right, no, he learned a hateful word. word. It's a bad it's bad word. It's something about Polish oh. people. No, 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 not that. Uh, it, you stole my dad's it's, weed. It's so uh, it's, it's like up. it's like uh, internet lingo, but somehow it like relates to modern lingo now. I, in what, English word. What's, I'm not what's the one for hot dogs? Oh, glizzy. Glizzy. Right. Hot glizzy. Yeah, my buddy Patty told me glizzy. I mean, hot dog. That was fun. <laughs> we were out somewhere, and there was a kid serving hot dogs, and he was just like, oh, we got a glizzy, and the kid started laughing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I I'm sad my kids know that. My understanding of the English language is more traditional, so we, I, I hear more modern things like that, and I feel like I'm the old man sitting on the front porch just yelling at my uh, kids to get off my front lawn because I'm just like, I don't understand what these kids are saying. Like, <laughs> I, I, have, I, I used to be very... Uh, like, anti-lingo? Anti-lingo, I used to... But, like, I also... I'm picky on my anti-lingo. <sighs> like, dead ass, I can't stop saying. I, I just love think, that word so I much. Just, I can't stop encouraging people now. It's all downhill. What am I doing? I better Yo, start rolling. You're just busted. in the way, Tom. Get out of the way. Exactly. <laughs> join them. You know, join yeah, them. And, and, but Elon Musk told us. <laughs> singularity. <laughs> Glizzy is a fun word, right, boys? It's better than hot dog. Right. Tom, jump back into the syphilitic idiot. All right. Sorry about that. I was having fun with that. Uh, right. So, so for some reason, when he moves to Switzerland, he decides to renounce his Prussian citizenship, and he becomes stateless for the rest of his life because I think that was some, like, stupid principle he had. He's like, I'm 24. I don't need a state. I don't need a dad. I don't know. Anyway. God's what- dead, and so is my country. So Fuck George Bush. George Bush only <laughs> likes black people. I believe that's hey, how, how many, the saying Andrew, goes. Andrew, how many people did you meet in Canada that moved to Canada because of George Bush? Uh, not too many, but I met more because of Trump. Oh, really? I was, I was, uh, yeah. I was hoping for zero because everyone yeah. says, "Fuck <laughs> it, we're moving to Canada." Yeah, I, I think it's a pretty non-existent number. Like when someone yeah. says, "Ah, oh, man, you know, it's not that bad to get I'm on to Canada." It's just like, are you though? Do you know how hard it is to move? Yeah, I like the idea of it. Right? Those yeah. ones just go to like Newfoundland. They don't go anywhere. <laughs> Yeah, uh, trailer park boys. What about Iceland? Is Iceland yeah. uh, is it hard to move to Iceland? You think? Or I don't know. Well, have, have you ever moved a U-Haul over water? Uh, no. <laughs> 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 no I, I mean, oh, wait, that's right. That's a lot of money. Yeah, it's, it's pricey. I mean, it depends on how much you have. I don't got shit. You don't have I don't got so shit. Many floaties. I got garbage bags full of shit. I own there. Yeah, you actually. Yeah, your room is quite scary. I could pack up my shit and leave in like a day. It's cool. I love that feeling. I hate having yeah. too much shit. I realize that I don't actually like any of my shit. So it's out. almost the same thing. I can just leave it. Or yeah. set, perhaps Did, set did you fire. really need it? Did you really need it? You'll think of it at the it end of the day. It doesn't matter. It's time exactly. for this. Now, okay, enough of that. We're doing Side too track. much philosophy on this fucking philosophy episode. And Tom smoked weed before it's he came irony. on the show tonight. I smoked, I smoked legal marijuana from Andrew Cuomo's penis. <laughs> now, once in Basel, he starts doing overtime uh, giving lectures, right? He's on this philology thing. That's why he's there. But he starts to tie the philology into his philosophy. And he's doing the overtime. So he's just like, well, I have some ideas about, like, you know, life, too. It's not just language and history, all that stuff. And kids are like, oh, do it. So they start oh. coming by. Um, and luckily, 
His home at the university was only 40 miles away from Wagner's new joint, Villa Tribschen, next to Switzerland's Lake Lucrin. 40 all, miles. 40 miles, that's it. So that's like, far, though, back then. Back then, but you would hire someone with a horse, and you would sit in the back, and you would do a crossword puzzle, and you'd be there in three hours. Yeah! That's still a long... Even today's standards, three hours of travel at work? Holy fuck. Well, it wasn't a work. He wouldn't go back and forth. He lived at the oh, university, you're right, you're so right, he could right, walk right, there, sorry. and then on weekends, he would leave early. Sorry. He'd pack yeah. his little bag. I thought it was an everyday thing. I'm sorry. I understand. No, 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 no. I understand no, the disconnection. He would take the three hours, like a like a possible Tinder date, you know, to see uh, What's Wagner's cracking? little little dingle snapper. Um, <laughs> uh, but you know, uh, Mike, as you know, you've been on the internet game. You know, you're not always going to see a titty or uh, a dingle snapper. Yeah, it's like a <laughs> yeah, it's pretty a uh, shallow place. Also, or that. you'll see a dingle yeah. snapper when you yeah, don't want to see one. Yeah, maybe flattering though. Snapper. Yeah. yeah. I thought you looked good before I thought I knew you had a dingle snap. He looked I'll totally different than the one, picture. As long as I get to see titties or dingle snap, well, I don't care. Travis, you don't care. You will honestly have sex with anything. Well, you, that's your philosophy. Uh, well, you know. That's good. I applaud it. I think it's great. <laughs> nice. There's no judgment. <laughs> I love it. As, uh, as long yeah. as there's no syphilis. Yeah, well, you know what's great is that the zoo, all the people there are naked. <laughs> <laughs> They can't wear clothes. It's illegal there. <laughs> it's only at the county zoo, okay? Uh, so, what? Right. I'm just saying, baboons got nice rumps. <laughs> nice and red. <laughs> what about in my cack? That's a little small for me. I like. <laughs> oh, no, they get bigger. Oh, okay. Oh. Get bigger. <laughs> wow, that's, uh, you know, some would say heinous. Other would say love. It, yeah, well, you know, you can't judge in today's day and age. I don't they judge. share most of our genome. They they do. Also, let's continue. Uh, I have much to do, and uh, the drink is catching up with me, hence why I keep uh. slowing down here. So the environment that Wagner created was like a fairy tale, and Nietzsche was very into it at this impressionable age of 24, 25. Uh, he fell in love with Wagner's wife, though, which is a very contentious point, uh, Cosima, who happened to be the daughter of of Franz Litz, who was another famous composer. Oh. He fawned over Litz. this. You know Litz. You got the Litz. I know. Great chocolates. Starts with an S. Slitz. Um, oh, okay. He fawned over this married woman. It was weird because Wagner was his father figure. And the politics of the situation is strange. You know, here's your father figure and here's your, like, mother figure. Yeah. Uh, you know where I'm going with this. You don't. Uh, Freud would have a field day. Yeah. 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 You don't shit where you sleep, they say. Yeah, well, that's slightly different. It's close, though. I mean, he's... Or don't come where you learn. Yeah, don't, yeah. yeah. Don't, you don't, wait, you don't come where you learn? I beg to differ, dude. <laughs> don't, don't come as you are. Don't come uh, with them knowing. <laughs> <laughs> dude, really? <laughs> All right, I like that one the best. We cut that one. I feel uh, I'm going to get like backlash. No, 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 what do you, no, no, why no, would you get backlash? We're bla- we're, everyone will uh, like that the most. Fuck. We're, get, we're putting that on a t-shirt. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, yeah. um, in 1870, for Cosima's birthday, he gave her a manuscript of the genesis of the tragic idea, which later becomes his first book, The Birth of Tragedy. Under the tension, this completely unreciprocated simpish move created Nietzsche's awkward moment was soon overshadowed by the start of the Franco-Prussian war. Oh, so no, it's good because he gives her this manuscript like, Hey, I love you, Cosima. And she goes, you're my nice. best friend. Yeah. And then he's like, Oh, fuck, I'm going to join the army. Hey, can you take a photo of me in these yoga pants? <laughs> so oh. I can send it to my BF. <laughs> wow. That's hot. He was, a uh, an incel. Did you uh, actually, no, he has, he's had sex before. He's syphilis. No, uh, yeah, yeah, he's got syphilis. He's not in some, He's sorry. drooling out of his fucking mustache over here. Yeah. But he's just like, you know. Probably, <laughs> he probably got it from another incel. Yeah, that's true. Probably. Yeah. yeah, when two incels meet, they get one, or two, one of two things. It's AIDS or married. True. And uh, syphilis. Dude, Dude, I, I, syphilis is the, the uh, re- wild card you get. Syphilis was Dude, the I, AIDS before AIDS was cool. I hate women. 
you hate women, let's make out and touch your penises and dock together. <laughs> it's an gay, experiment. Though. It's an experiment, Mom. I don't love him. He's my brother. I mean, <laughs> is it gay if two straight men have sex? Uh, no. Yes. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's pretty gay. Uh, but who knows? If you're I out mean, there, the classical definition. Nah, as long as they don't kiss. Listen, it would be my, high five. My thought process. Yeah, is they this. high five. It's perfect. Yeah, you can touch the tips, just don't touch the tongue. Yeah, that's that. I like that. That's, that's very fair, conservative, that's very old school. I like that. Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, look, it's all going downhill. So the way I look at it is that if you're questioning these things and you're in your youth, just go suck a few dicks. Yeah, test yeah. why not? It's all going downhill. You no test one, the pool. <laughs> no, no bank is going to get on your case about it. So what's the point? Have a good time. Dude. Now, where the hell was I? Under right, oh, syphilis. Never mind. Syphilis. Right. Seeing the German military roll out the way they did was uh, quite the vigor behind Nietzsche's will to power concept that we might get into later. I don't know how long this episode's going. Um, he was present. He was present at the Battle of Verdun, which is not the original, uh, the well-known one. There's one that. Took place during World War One. Uh, it's well known. I think it was 1914. Uh, if you type in the Battle of Verdun, you will not get the one that Nietzsche was at. You will get a one uh, that was much worse. So anyway. Verdun, Verdun is crazy because people have been fighting at Verdun for literally thousands of years. What is it like, with that? I don't know. The you think it's haunted? Grapes in France. Got good grapes. I, I, I don't know what it is, but either way, Nietzsche found himself at one of these lesser than battles, and um, he was a medic. So he's in the army, he's a medic, and he's put in this cattle truck filled with six dying men, um, and it was supposed to get to this location, and he was in there for like two days with these dying men, and afterwards he was suffering with diphtheria and dysentery and the whole thing was just a mess and he just like lost his mind for a couple days but anyway it doesn't matter because he's still a professor back at basil a few weeks later come on go back to old uninvolved switzerland and have fun yeah, yeah they never get involved in shit dude because they're smart they're smart yeah. they're rich and they're handsome yeah they go where the money is and i'm saying this as a jew they got good backpacks there too no yeah. no pressure they, had they got great pocket knives. That too. They did it. So and while... cheese. I love Swiss cheese, by the way. Oh, yeah. So while Good back Swiss in Switzerland, cheese. he visits Wagner again regularly. But after seeing the brutality of war, he saw Wagner in a totally different light. He's like, eh, all this incense and feathers and chocolate is seriously not that cool anymore. I just saw men doing real man shit. You know, and you're in here like yelling at someone for not dusting your piano down uh so it's yeah, you know just, there's I, perspective change you probably watch right. someone he probably just watched someone get their arms sawed off for a fucking bullet wound or he, some bullshit like he that. was trapped in a room with six dying men of which he was supposed to cut off their arms he was cutting the arms yeah that's just probably he was an arm cutter. Fuck. so after a while when you have when you go visit your friend again he's yelling at the maid for the tea being too hot you're like, just like yeah i've seen some crazy <laughs> shit man just wait, man. Yeah. I just saw some shit. Wait, okay? Just you wait till 2001, okay? You see what happens there. A little bit of PTSD. Right. So, uh, his music was still rather divine, so he admits to this in his later writings, but he's like, I am over that guy. Um, Nietzsche got tired of being around the baby boy, and Wagner was also growing big on his whole anti-Semitic thing, so that doubled down. Nietzsche wasn't into that. He was just like, no, nah, I'm indifferent. You shouldn't be angry to these people. So so this I think we've mentioned this before where you, Tom, you said that, that TikTok should emit radiation from your phone. Yeah, for fun. I think no. that I think that every TikTok um, star influencer that is like Doja Cat is the best artist ever should have to saw an arm off and then come back to doing their job. That'd be a good rite of passage. I think so yeah. too. Yeah, I mean, I think that's extreme, but I'm I'm not gonna it, take it off the table. It would make the quality the better. Yeah, yeah they right? have to use a Swiss Army knife. You know, the content would be amazing because they have to like you have to lose a limb every time you fucking do it. Yeah, it's like the Pain Olympics. Have you ever seen that? Oh, I think I might God. have. 
So yeah. That's the nut chopping, right? Well, it's all kinds yep. of things. Like, uh, shove a, what's the biggest jar you could fit in your ass? It, yeah, it was something like uh, this guy. I don't know all the depth, the, the details behind it, but some guy was offering like a million dollars. You would enter the Pain Olympics, um, submit a video of you just torturing yourself or doing something terrible. And, and not get paid for it. And then the, the winner gets paid. So, like, you might cut off your pinky, but some guy just cut off his penis, so he gets the million dollars. Oh, wow. So now you're down a pinky, mm. and... This should all not only be legal, but encouraged. Watch, want to watch that later? Encouraged. Yeah, I need to go to bed early, so yes, I think we should watch that. Let's, Tom, can we take another here. break? Sorry. Oh, Travis, your penis is just... I you, know! You have a large prostate, Travis. I do. So you talk about penis chopping, and immediately it's like, oh, God, I got to evacuate. The bladder yeah, starts right? going. He's like, oh, it's going to happen now. That is gnarly. Pain Olympics? Like, who the fuck would be like, yo, I got this. I'm going to win this shit. Do that. That's like one of my earliest memories of the internet was being sent uh, a link to, you know, the BME Pain, Pain Olympics by friends. Yeah. And it was just like, oh, my God, what the fuck is wrong with people? I never saw it. I just heard a lot of the stories. I'm not really good with, like, gore and stuff like that. I don't. So I never went out of my way to see it. I was and, going. That's yeah, fucked up. It, trust me. It's. Mm. I mean, I'm sure by today's standard, it's not so bad as well because the back then they were recording it on you know crappy yeah, like, like mega pixel, webcam yeah. videos, like you could barely see what was really going on. But at the time, it was like, oh god, what the fuck am I watching? It's literally someone chopping their own nuts off. It's like, what the fuck? Yeah, I, like I don't know. People, that's yeah, good content. People have that. that what's that? That more that weird mortality thing you're into. Everyone's into like that weird. You want to see people get hurt, kind of thing. Uh, morbid curiosity. Morbid curiosity. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. It's almost like autodidactic. That's fucked.com. I saw a little bit of rotten. What's that fucked? It's just all the most fucked up videos on the internet. It's called that's fucked.com. You never um, been on there? No, dude. I YZ? The YZ.net was probably the most fucked up website. I, I, I that's just, where you see people get like assassinated in like crazy like Middle Eastern videos. I was just going to say, you ever, uh, you ever been videos. on live leak? Oh, yeah, like cartel videos. No, I, I like I stay away from all Whoa. this crap because like I know I'm cu- I, I am curious like that. But I also know part of me is just like you ever seen the chainsaw videos, Tom. No, nah, I don't want to watch where it. He, it gets like stuck in the guy's neck. And you're like, oh, my God, that looks like Jesus. a terrible way to go out. Yeah, this is uh, this is beautiful conversation. And then you learn how beautiful humans are. They would do that to each other. Yeah, right. Like, we're going to just shoot species. a guy. You got to torture him with a chain. Like, that shit's getting stuck. Like, it's stalling out in his neck. And you got to, like, ah, and he's just screaming. I, I, I admit, the right like, the guy next to him, he's just like, holy fuck, that's, I'm going to do that next. It's happening to me. And so they should have got a better chain. And then they get an ad comes up. You got to watch the ad. It's like some bullshit <laughs> ad. <laughs> ad for Home Depot. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah, of Yo. course. Yeah, it's uh, got a lot of. Uh, Terrible times. I don't know why we were watching that stuff, but it's curiosity. I'm not watching it. I don't. I don't really want to because I know myself. I know I'll be thinking all night. <laughs> and I'm about... sure you'll be on the watch list for going on these websites because they're fine. pretty fucked. But I'm on the watch list for other things. Um, I've been on a watch list since 2001, probably. <laughs> oh shit! Yeah. Dude, well, you know, as soon as they start, they really double down on the the uh, on the watch Wait, list. Were you as one soon of, as they were double you down of... on uh, taking out buildings. Yeah, were you one of the guys that parachuted out of the plane before it hit? <laughs> Shit. That's right. We're all from New York. You can laugh. I have never been to New York. <laughs> Allegedly. It's a, sh- it's a shithole. <laughs> a good parachute. Shit man. show. Hey, uh, from what I hear, it's not uh, Toronto ain't much better. It's, it's a dirty town. <laughs> yeah, lots of dirt here. That's for sure. Um, Up, tell me this. more about this boy. So Wagner, he's still out. He's got this like distance to him, but Nietzsche's still like kind of orbiting, if you would. And in August of 1876, he opens this opera house in Beirut. Um, it's funded entirely by v- Ludwig, our boy uh, who Beethoven. Ran... No, 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 Ludwig, uh, King Ludwig the uh. Second of Bavaria. He's the guy who um, destroyed the treasure treasury. To build Disneyland castles, remember him? Yeah, the smart man. I know I brought him up before, but I, I'm not sure if you were there. Sometimes you're like a ghost to me, Mike. You're like, what do you mean? What's that supposed to mean? You're like Whoopi Goldberg. You're like ghost. You just come yeah. in. You're like Patrick Swayze, I love, dude. I'm just trying to make pots. I love when you're here, but you're not here some episodes. That's I'm like, sorry. 
I'm, I'm in high demand in other places. You are in high demand. And I respect those people when, who contract you before they get, uh, you know. Anyway. They pay me in f- favors. Yes. Anyway, so Nietzsche went to this opening festival, but felt entirely sick over the uh, patriotic pandering. And this is how I feel all the time. Um the idea of like Ludwig being like Germany's the best, Germany's the best, and you got <laughs> Wagner doing like I'll write music to it, let's make it work. The whole thing's like a it's like a, a um it's a fuck fest for your country, you know. Like it's very very German. This is what kind of made the Nazis gave them the strong backbone of this patriotic Self-pride. sense. Uh, these pure race kind of Germanic pride. Ideals, yeah. Um, yeah, it dates back, you know, years, years, hundred years before uh, the whole World War II thing. Well, yeah, I mean, also the the Nazis had this whole lore about, you know, the whole reason why they're the Third Reich. It's like the third, the first one was the Romans. So they try to link all this shit together, right? Right. So they're just like, yeah. Uber. So. So Nietzsche is there and he's watching like this kind of display of guys jerking each other off because like, oh, so German, so German, you're so blonde and blue eyed and handsome. Yeah. Just like, wow, that's a, that's a, you know, you drink beer like I drink beer. I want to see your wiener. Giant syphilis pool there. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's all that. They do it right in your Stein in Germany. I did. I went, and there, it was odd. There were certain tables uh, where you would sit at in Oktoberfest, and the man's later hosen was somewhat adjusted, and <laughs> it was ready to party. <laughs> anyway, Nietzsche removed himself entirely from Wagner's circle. He's like, "Fuck it, I'm out of here," and he started taking his writing very ser- seriously. Nietzsche is responsible for the term "What doesn't kill me make me sh- uh, kills me makes me stronger." What doesn't kills me kill me. I'm drinking. What doesn't kill me makes me stronger. Now yeah. say it like that. And that's how Nietzsche talked. I'm a survivor. Me? I'm on the make it. <laughs> I'm a survivor. Does he also write that one? Um, yeah, he actually did. And Beyonce, like a lot of other people that I know, are plagiarists. So yeah. Nietzsche, the way he wrote, okay, it was all in aphorisms. Like, what does that mean? It's like small, tiny, digestible bits of knowledge, like live, like laugh, Confucius love. kind of shit. Yeah, uh, he was oh, like, he, he so was. This the... is a guy. This is a guy writing signs at Home Goods. Yeah, this is that guy. So instead of writing like a story, he wasn't like Aesop, where he wrote a story with a moral to it. What he would do a lot of his stories, like when I read, when I was reading uh, Zuspek Zarastostra, I can't fucking talk. Uh, it's just like. This weird, perverted, masturbatory exercise of, like, a man walked to a bunch of people and was like, you're doing it wrong. You did it so wrong because this is how you do it. Like, and it was just, like, nonstop, over-the-top speech giving. Like, everyone is giving a speech all the time. And that's how we got the message across. That's why this is terrible writing. That's why Nietzsche is not good and he's taking out of context all the time because everything's a clip of a speech like he, he in his head oh, so like he's a summary speech. he's autistic to a degree like he's every- breaking it down to layman's terms kind of right you know when you know when people oversimplify like everything yeah and they're like well why didn't you just say this to that person they could have just like- said it in one word yeah, it's just like, well, you weren't there. Like, life doesn't work in the ways that he preaches about it. That's yeah. Tom, this is the problem with Nietzsche. Um, what are you yeah. trying to say about my sign? I'm very proud of it that says Rosé all day that I have right. over my bedpost. To be what fair. What are you trying to say about it? To be fair, uh, Nietzsche did, uh, at this point, he was over alcohol. He thought it was terrible, but I'll get into that later. Um, all right. So Actually, no, tried, I, like, won't. Rose, I won't. I won't. I'm not, I'll never. get into it now. Um, but as I mentioned, a lot of Nietzsche's writings, it's like these small snip snippets that are of large context that just kind of like page to page or just people talking about their ideas and they're really stupid. Um, so he denounces alcohol claiming that it is as bad for Western civilization as Christianity. So that's not good. That's not good at all. No. Yeah. Pretty fucking terrible. (laughs) Yeah. The idea is I like, like booze. 
Um, I'll get into this later after we finish him and we can talk. And if you remember to ask about the alcohol, I can tell you about it. But we have some more to go. So he spends his afternoons walking, thinking, jotting stuff down in his notebook, even though he uh, he wasn't really in good health. His health did start to fade considerably. Now, his philosophy in his books starts teetering on the practical side enough where people start considering it psychology with the release of the book Human All to Human, which is like an observation of Wagner's ego. So he starts looking at Wagner and in the book Human All to Human, it's like this very... Uh, analytic look at how people desire things and behavior and I don't know, all this crap that's like uh, it kind of fucked with Freud for a while. Very influential on Freud. Freud actually had to step away from reading his books because he felt that it was like too leading, like his ideas were too in line. Uh, right. Even though they came from very different ideologies, um, there was something about what Nietzsche put out that really struck a chord for people in the late 1800s. That it was totally groundbreaking. Mm. Now he's consider he's criticizing Wagner's overindulgence and selfishness. Nietzsche starts closing himself off to the world. He starts spending more time in solitude, and in a weird way, becoming a lot of what he criticized. His ego starts to spurt. He goes through a second <clears throat> puberty of his ego, as if his brains weren't big enough before. Now he becomes a guy where it's like. I don't know if I uh, should be talking to you because you're stupid. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. It, 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 so it was like an overly intellectual ego death. It's a terrible way to live. Uh, we feel like we've all, I've, we've all met somebody who probably read Nietzsche that, you know, thinks that way. I met probably. someone who was too busy to read meet Nietzsche and thinks that way. Right. They read the me. spark notes. Mm. That's you, Mike. That's why you're uh, such a yeah. fucking bastard. I know. So autodidactic. Are you ever going to apologize to me? I know what I do. See? He'll never know. He what doesn't I, even know what he's done. What, what I do? It's all right, Mike. Just hang up for the ride. That's pretty fucked up. You're going to bring it up and, I, up and I explain it it's to you. terribly me. fucked up. If, yeah. I, if I, you explain it to me, then I can apologize. Nah, I just mess around. You're a sweetie. Now, now, you're a real now sweetie, I'm all, but you're getting on my nerves. I'm now. all congested now. You missed the bit. What happened to Nietzsche? Thank you. <laughs> in 1879, Nietzsche resigns from Basil because of his weakness. He gets all fucking a shitty. Fucking his baby. Yeah, he's like, I, I can't do it no more. Ah, his brain is also turning into a sponge. Damn. Keep in mind. Yeah, that's true. He's got the syphilis, but also he's like, oh, I gotta resign from this job where I just have to talk to people. Oh, I'm so ill. It's like, uh... you see, Nietzsche, he didn't lift. That's the problem. Yeah. If you don't lift. You're yeah. not gonna be able to do the grift or something like that. You gotta get that sponge hard and firm. Yeah. If he did lift, he would be the Ubermensch. But he never became the Ubermensch. He became the Uber bitch. <laughs> now he had a laundry list of aches and moved around Italy and France in an attempt to move to a climate that would make him feel better. His eye starts uh, eyesight started to fail and he started dealing with headaches. He would get laid out for like a week at a time because they were so bad. He was somewhat of a hypochondriac. Slews of pills and oils and like band aids. Oh, and shit. you're like, like super nervous. Uh, well, hypochondriacs just they think, think they're sick, sick all the time, time right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he had yeah. just like he had a collection of medicine. Oh, fuck. And back then, medicine was just like a, 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 joke, a jar of, yeah. with a thing in it. And no one knows what that thing is. It may but it look olive, good. Olive oil for all. It was just all <laughs> olive just oil. Of goop. Yeah, exactly. It's a jar of goop. It's got like a mouse foot in it. And uh, I need this so I can look at the sun. See, all you got to do is get a jar. You put a cross on it. It makes it medicine instantly. Right. And yeah. if you change the cross, then, it's, then, then you have booze. So at this point of the story, on top of him being very weak, you would think you would think we'd start feeling bad for him. But no, this is when Nietzsche becomes the laughing stock of the story. So we've already had some ammo, but enter Salome. Okay. Salome? Yeah. Yeah, that's her Salmon? name. So Lou Andreas Salome, a 21-year-old author and psychoanalyst. Now, she's a, she's a hottie, okay? Now, she was introduced Woo! to one of Nietzsche's few pals, Paul Ray, who uh, tried his hardest to court the sexy Salome. Now, Did Salome, Paul Ray make Ray-Bans? Uh, no, Paul Ray wrote a book and then uh, was instantly thrown in the trash. No <laughs> one cares for Paul Ray at all. Um it made good toilet paper. 
Yeah, I, I clicked on his Wikipedia page and uh, it just showed a picture of toilet paper, actually. Coincidentally. Yeah, pretty much. That's far. A Salome rejected his romantic advances, but like a true Lloyd Christmas, Paul Ray said, let's move in together and be friends. Yeah. And uh, how about you invite uh, other dudes over so when you bang them, I can hear through the wall and uh, we'll make this work somehow. So she goes, that sounds great because we're splitting rent. <laughs> Oh my god. Oh, this uh, is great. Your room is next to mine. Yeah. <laughs> this is con- continuing the whole incel theory here. Oh, yeah. It, yeah, he, yeah, was, yeah. he would definitely have yeah. like a, a camera like hidden in a room if they had them back then. If they had them back then, absolutely. He, he gives me those vibes. Well, they had the old school <laughs> cameras back then. It was just a hole in the wall. They True. actually used to publish yeah, just... that. That was actually was <laughs> on German TV. It was called um, uh, German's Funniest Home Videos. Germany's Funniest Home Glory, Videos. Glory Hole of Video. Yeah, that's where the first glory yeah, hole is probably classic mentioned. style with the painting with the eyes cut. Out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> but it's just like a shitty painting and a, a like that. These are the academic types who um, Nietzsche is now in circles that are more like ah a- academics and Artsy, being smart. Fartsy, they're yeah. they're more. It's more important than the artwork. Like they all acknowledge art's good, but they're just living in shacks. Um, so Salome. Uh, bu- 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 Salome, so her had, nipples she, were hard. Her nipples were hard, but she had also seen this okay. before with one of her professors. Apparently, this wasn't the first person she, that she brought along like this and agreed to um, walk all over this man's pride and testicles. Uh, as and he, prostate. After all, he offered. And a man who offers is uh, an idiot. Uh, a simp. Total simp. Yes, this is simp. Uh, total. <sighs> this is hard. Simp this was hard with, to read. With a side of cuck. Yes. Yeah, right? <laughs> yes. So now it gets better. And by that, I mean hilariously worse. Um, there's always one more room uh, room for one more in the commune. So in April of 1882, Paul Ray goes, uh, hey, Salome, meet my friend's mustache along with my friend Nietzsche. Now, Nietzsche immediately falls head over heels, heels for this Lilithian lesbianic librarian and he starts foaming from the stash for her progressive body if you know what i mean Ooh! he's like oh god i need this shit <sighs> so in <laughs> it's very cold in switzerland you have to keep warm somehow yes and in possibly the most cowardice act known to man nietzsche asks his friend paul to propose to salome on his behalf Oh, oh, that's a hard one. All right. That's almost as bad as like proposing at a Mets game. So he's like, yeah. Paul Ryan's not even banging this chick. No, but he's but trying to. Oh, right. so he's Paul like, Ryan. yo, yeah, can yeah. I get in on this action? Well, here's like, the thing. So imagine, imagine um, I'm asking you to hit on a girl for me. That you've already failed on hitting on, but I want to pass her on to you. No, you're n- you're unsuspecting this. I like this chick, and I'm like, I'm like, I really like that girl. And you were like, well, I already tried to marry her, and she said no. Um, and I'm like, can you get me her phone number? And you're like, sure. sure and just never do it. That may have happened, but I think <laughs> that she that's very well could have happened. But I, I think that she actually. Um, it's the air herself. Oh shit! She was like, "Oh, this dude oh, Nietzsche's okay. got a nice stash. I want to take a look at." Yeah, exactly. And for fun, for funsies, here's a quote that I pulled up of Nietzsche, which is, uh, "You can take this however you want, but I think it's very funny." Is that woman was God's second mistake? Um, oh, what was the first mistake? Okay. I'm assuming either man or himself. Men. Yes. Oh, she must have been in the freaky kind. He's probably like dance girls. Crazy. No, it's fine. I it's mean, fine. no, God's. God's first mistake was making a guy that could turn into a snake. Yeah. Because if God it, created everything, how the fuck did the devil show up? Why did he put that apple there? For that That's shit? a good question, right? What the fuck put that apple there? You know? I feel like there's some holes in the story. Okay. Who was there anyway? Who's the fucking, like, who's, who's the fucking Adam was. Adam was, and I trust him. Bob Saget. All yeah. right. He's got, <laughs> I trust him now. Okay. Not embarrassed enough to throw in the towel. They continued living together. So three of them bopping around city to city, uh, pretending that being smart is important. One month later, Nietzsche's like, he corners Salome and proposes again. And guess what? She said no. Yeah, that's right. She says no. She's like, somehow Nietzsche's sister, Elizabeth, found out that he was living 
with this woman and was just like, what the fuck? And sent a torrent of letters telling Nietzsche to leave this horlet, uh, horlet. Let's go with that word. Horlet Jew. <laughs> now Nietzsche refused. Nietzsche took uh, to calling her, his sister a llama throughout her life because he felt that the description of a load bearing saliva spitting stubborn animal fit her well. Ooh, and, I'm uh, just gonna say ooh. I would be very proud to be called a llama. A very majestic animal. Llamas are dope. <laughs> and very useful. You're Have you never seen animal. them gallop? <laughs> yeah, they can make you a sweater. I can't yeah. make you, me a sweater. You've been load bearing. Imagine a sweater for made out time. of my pubes. <laughs> well, you are load bearing, and that's fine. So anyway, he triple dog double dared himself and went for a third proposal after the torrent of letters. And this time it was like, uh, this is gonna go. So what right. about a date? What's that? He just goes straight for the proposal, not even just like let's get some uh, Well, they went out enough times they talked about philosophy and stuff. And uh, I think with okay, guys okay. guys who are this disconnected from like anything yeah. we'll just be like well we had that great conversation wow, about the me. works of ingmar bergman why don't you love me and she's just like <laughs> i don't know because i like that and or or, or i'm weird. lying to you to sound smart one of the two right i mean fuck. i love going to that kurosawa marathon with you yeah that was a lot of fun thanks for taking me out thanks for paying for it it was dope anyway thanks. so uh, i've never been drier thank you <laughs> I'll see you later, friend. <laughs> so it's also very likely that during this time, Ray and Nietzsche were both taking, uh, well, let's put it this way. They were taking the semen out of each other to release some of the reality of the situation. I well, love that. That's God hilarious. Do. Sometimes. God bleed. Yeah, At least they're the relieving out. each other. Oh, we can't pressure. fuck this chick. We got to fuck yeah. each other. Yeah. So if you guys, uh, I, I, I'm not sitting at my computer because I'm being a high tech tonight. Uh, there's one picture of Nietzsche and Ray and Salome that really describes this whole thing. If you guys want to Google this, just type in Nietzsche character. I mean, not character, carriage. Nietzsche carriage. And you'll see uh, the three of them hanging out together. I'm looking at You're like rims right. for a car. I suppose the guy's yeah. name again. And I see. She looks like a little goblin and she's got a little whip. <laughs> yeah, she's got the whip. She's, she's got a whip. So those of you at home, <laughs> she's got a whip, and uh, the two of them are seeming to be pulling this carriage. And oh, damn! Just so you know, Nietzsche's thirty-eight in this photo. How old's that chick? She's twenty-one. Oh, so this is so legal. This is it's legal. It's very legal. In fact, I'm happy for her. But yeah, she's is, a, yeah, this she's a hero she's of the enough. hero of the story. This yeah, is a fe- this woman drives two Subarus, she's one for each Birkenstock <laughs> foot. <laughs> is this the first photo of two simps and a chick together? Yeah, I think so. Mm-hmm. Historically think, speaking, oh my fucking so, god. So, uh, yeah, look, all I'm saying, they do, go, both, go girl, they do both look like simps. They do. Uh, look at them. Like, they're, they're like, they're very, like afraid as fuck in the corner. Yeah, <laughs> extremely yeah. stiff. Look, that's Nietzsche. That's apparently the one of the that's them the bravest minds moment. of the 19th century. Oh, look, she's she's the bravest mind. She's about a fucking. She's like, yeah, I ain't doing shit with you fucking losers. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But you're gonna pay for these fucking concerts, though. She's definitely. Yeah, she, <laughs> they definitely paid for the picture and yeah. all that crap. She, she had an OnlyFans. She had an OnlyFans, and her subscription was like fifty dollars a month. She didn't even need one. She's showing double. nothing. Yeah, she's yeah. looking at the camera as if to be like, "Get me the fuck out of here, or I'll yeah. beat the shit out of you." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. They stay well, she knew me. they also had to stand there for like like thirty seconds too, because it's an old timey camera. No wonder she's <laughs> aggravated. She's stuck there with for them uh, with them for sure thirty seconds. So yeah. yeah, I feel like Nietzsche and and Ray here. They're the kind of guys that would in today's society type endlessly on Kiwi farms about cucks and all that shit. But just trying to even talk to a woman would be unbearable and find themselves in a situation like this in no time. Also, I mean, Ray's suit is kind of fits him. But Nietzsche is he's man, a that guy mess. needs to go to guy needs to go to it's a, a little baggy, tailor, bro. dude. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, moving along from here, uh Salome and Ray, they had enough of Nietzsche and they were like, uh, goodbye. So they left their smart friend behind. I don't even know where. 
This sent Nietzsche down a depressive spiral that he never actually recovered from. Keep oh. in mind, this guy does have syphilis. So on top of being rejected, he's retarded. So double hard and, <laughs> and, and ready to roll down the hill, if you know what I'm saying. Yeah. Now, Salome went to on acquiring many smart simps, such as her platonic husband, Frederick Carl uh, Anders, and famous Donald Duck impersonator Sigmund Freud. Fire. Now. When it comes to Frederick Nietzsche, the egg is starting to cook. Okay? Mm. We are and really oil. getting there. Nietzsche moved to Sils Maria, which is in Switzerland, and stayed on a tiny rented room next to a lake. From here on out, it's very boring, so I'm going to drive through it. His life reverted to isolation, working nonstop on his masterpieces, his decoding of the human condition. His health got much worse, and he would regularly have debilitating headaches for three or four days at a time. Um, let's see. Not that I read them, to be honest, but a lot of people say that his books at this time were very good. They were better than Thus Spoke Zarathustra or whatever the fuck that book is. Uh, this is Beyond Good and Evil and On the Genealogy of Morality. These books are some of his higher arts people really can attach to these. Yeah. They're, they're a little more matured than just like an angry guy in Hot Topic. Uh, upset that they don't have the 4XL in uh, the motionless, motionless and white. Um, it's a little bit more than that. So he's not selling a lot of books at this time. To be fair, he doesn't have a lot of people who follow him. Uh, he was upset that no one was reading his books, but he wasn't doing a good job getting out there. He's mentally ill. Right now, he's basically Pepe. That's he's right. cooking right now. His brain's... He's cooking, and he's living mostly on a stipend from Basel University. Because, you know, when you leave on sickness, people take care of you yeah. back then. Right, he's isolating himself, too. Right? That's not good for your mental health. Well, as I mentioned, R&R, ready to roll downhill. In 1888, <laughs> his insanity started to surface. In his new book, Eke Homo, which is not a gay joke, uh, he claimed his 1883 book, Thus Spoke, Spoke Zarathustra, was the finest book ever written. Um, okay. As I mentioned before, that book is terrible. And a lot of people who praise his books go, no, that's the bad one. That's definitely the bad one. Uh, he started reverting back to Angry Child after a while. Well, that would be like uh, like J.K. Rowling being like, Harry Potter and the Wizard's uh, Boulder is my best thing I ever wrote, and I wrote on a napkin. I t I, yeah, you're right. <laughs> yeah, and he's like, dude, I wrote the theme song to... 2001 Cheers. Space Odyssey. <laughs> I meant I meant Friends. 2001 Friends. That's the <laughs> Yes. So anyway, like I was saying, that book is kind of like Catcher in the Rye for its time. It's not really good. Doesn't hold a lot of value, but it did shoot off for a little bit. It's got a cult thing following, right? Right. So to put you in the mind of Nietzsche at this time, in Echo Homo. Uh, Homo he had chapters called Why I Am So Wise, Why I Write Such Great Books, Why I Am Destiny, <laughs> Destiny, where he straight up praises his own bowel movements. He's like, I took a nice shit, and you should shit like me. And That's pretty like, much what we do on this show with How's Your Week. Yeah. Pretty, pretty <laughs> philosophical dick stroking. Yeah. yeah. Um, we're sucking each other off. We do, in fact, imply without commanding. That's yeah. what separates us nice people from this insane person why my pee pee hurt why does it shoot out foam why does why it go in two different directions brain, why is my brain so spongy and soft why doesn't anyone love me yeah it's a hard one i mean he's, he's why the only can't bastard. i get my suit mm -hmm. tailored you can see where his, his philosophies came from he's trapped in this horrible mindset yeah, yeah I, why I write, write such a great book? Why I really, did I do it? Like, well, why not? I feel like he's an avid masturbator. I feel like he jerks off a lot. He probably does. That probably helps his craziness. I could imagine worse. him jerking off more than one time a day. Yeah, I can definitely see that. Yes. Yeah. Like a religious thing. Anyway, I see eight times. During the winters, Nietzsche would travel south to escape the pesky snowboarders in the Swiss. Uh, I, I don't know if that's accurate. I read that from the book. Skiers. I didn't make that up. Uh, he was staying in Turin, Italy, and this is where the famous Nietzsche hugging a horse thing happens. Okay, so we're approaching the end. Here. Okay. 
The story goes that Nietzsche was walking the streets of Turin when he saw a carriage driver whipping the shit out of his horse. Unconsolably, uh, an unconsolable Nietzsche walks up to him to the filthy animal and tosses his arms around him, trying to protect him, crying, I feel your pain, man, or something like that. (laughs) Damn. This probably didn't happen like this, but this is the legend. There's not that much to it. You know, you've heard that before. Nietzsche crying over a horse. Uh, this is the first time hearing it, but uh, sounds like an attention seeker to me. Right, exactly. Like Travis, a, you've heard that before, right? He'd be a YouTuber yeah. today. Yeah, I've heard that, boy. Andrew, you know about this. You know about the horse, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, crying over a dead horse or beating a dead horse. Oh, there we go. Be- uh, I heard that expression. Well, that's, uh, I mean, it's, look, either way, Nietzsche goes up. He's like, eh, skirt, skirt. Oh, Peter. Uh, either way, Nietzsche is certifiably insane from this moment on. Why is he insane? We've all seen Sea Biscuit with Shaquille O'Neal who <laughs> rides the horse. I would do the same thing. I'd be like, yeah, yeah stop being your animal, horse dude. Is a, horse is a very emotional animal. They, they sure basically are. Basically, he just carries our shit around. And he got metal emotional shoes on baggage. all the time. Yeah. yeah. Metal shoes, dude. That's tight. So he's taken to his rented room where he wrote letters in a mad frenzy. One was to the king of Italy, Umberto I, saying, I am having all anti-Semites shot. Uh, He sounds like he's from Portland. And (laughs) and in a postcard... I mean, would it be bad if all anti-Semites got shot? I don't know. That sounds pretty good to me. Well, it's just... uh, It's it's angsty. Like, I'm not not, not in defense of anti-Semites, but it's like you're a 44-year-old man. Like, you're obviously insane if this is the platform you're living on. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah, I mean, but it's you not, it's not like about it. being pro. It's just like, oh, uh, all right. Uh, Tom, okay. stop hating yourself. There's also like people like Hitler's out there. Yeah, I know. You sound very niche, Tom, hating yourself. Yeah, if Tom, if you were walking around. I all of a Germany, sudden have. Oh, Tom, now it's no. opening up. <laughs> Tom is no, actually Tom. from Plainview. I think Tom has Tom. syphilis. If you were walking around Germany, you'd just be like walking through a random field. And then all of a sudden, be like, and then be like, a Hitler appeared. And then you have to like be like, like fight the Hitler out of nowhere. Uh, yeah, I know. Well, ha, ha, okay, it's <laughs> that was the so craziest. shoot all the fucking anti Semites. It's not like it's not an issue of like I'm protecting anti Semites. It's the idea that that kind of behavior would most certainly enforce a, a terrible situation of doom. Uh, because for fuck's sake, Travis, you have tattoos. You might be an anti-Semite. Who's to say who the anti-Semite is? I mean, all you at this point, look- it's not an organization. All you have to do is look at my number one tattoo. It says it's a big <laughs> crossed off swastika. <laughs> yes. And it says, <laughs> my uh, bad. And, and it's just and it, um, around it are, are the linked chains of many foreskins that no, are. No, no, no. Yeah. It's, on my, it's on my shaft. And when my shaft is soft, it says Jews. And then when it gets hard, it says are cool. <laughs> <laughs> so if you see me when I'm soft, uh, it just says you, uh, Jews. Probably I need to see the, good. you're bluffing. I want to see it right now. I'm not, I'm not bluffing, dude. All right. Well, look, either way, all I'm saying, <laughs> all I'm saying is that this man has zero power in the world. He's living on social security, basically. And he's just like, I'm gathering all the anti-Semites, anti-Semites. I, that's what I'm saying here. This is not like n- nothing here makes sense. Okay. And then also he writes a letter to his friend, Jacob Burghardt, signing his name as Dionysus. Now, Burghardt being the only adult in the room says, I think we should pick up Nietzsche. He might be a little off. Oh, <laughs> I know they did that back then. I know they cared at all. Well, they cared. So he's beyond repair at this point. The oh. egg was not only hard boiled, but it was scrambled at the same time. Oh, shit. He spent some time in an asylum and then was released to the care of his mother, which was the worst thing for him, as he stated many times that he hated his mother. Uh, He spent most of his waking hours impersonating celery. And a few times he was uh, active. He would talk about he would Um, talk about like what kind of books he wrote. He'd be like, I wrote good books, didn't I? Tom, asylums back is the late 1800s. Yeah. They, they probably do the, like the really fucked up shit to you there. Yeah, but his mom would just nag him to death. It, uh, yeah, probably. Uh, I mean, yeah. that sounds about up to date with <laughs> modern standards. Yeah. yeah is that, 
But he's, like, probably, he's probably messed up from the asylum, too. That, that doesn't help, you know? Look, Nietzsche, from here on out... They Nietzsche... shove needles in your face all the time. Well, no, 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 no. I, I, I feel for this guy. You could be like... Mm. Your mom's like, what are you doing with your life? And you're like, Mom, I just wrote the BuzzFeed article. It has been shown to millions of people. I write the best article. I right. work for the Dodo. I wa- made a video about a dr- dog drowning, and millions of people watched it. So Thanks like, for I don't changing the earth, son. Uh, but why? Yeah. Look, all I'm saying is that um, this guy's already dead, and yeah. there's no good place for him. And unfortunately, from the time he goes insane to the time of his death was 11 years. Damn. Shit. Yeah, so this sucks. So, you know, let's not make fun of the vegetable anymore. Um, no, let's make fun of the vegetable. Yeah, what the fuck? I'm Why joking. Not? That's a joke. Yeah, That's part of the show, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, it's yeah, all... yeah, yeah. So yeah, in- ki- yeah, kiwis, yeah, cucumbers, yeah. Yeah, oh, that's one of those was a fruit. Tell both of them are fruit if you're <laughs> really whatever, autistic. I don't even care. How did Mr. Celery get on? Yeah, how- look, he's soup, and his brain is double soup. I'm okay? kind of hungry enough. The Me soup- too. We're going to go eat after this. Panera bread at night. Yeah, nighttime Panera, which is Dunkin' Donuts. With- <laughs> they got the leftover yeah. lentils, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. In 1897, his mother died, and Nietzsche was put in the care of his shitty sister. Now, she was a real knucklehead. She had gotten back from Paraguay recently, where her husband, Bernard Forster, was trying to make his very own white ethno state called Nueva Germania. Germania. Ooh, uh, we should return back to that guy. That sounds really dumb. He does sound fun, but there's not too much on him. We might be able to find it, and you know, uh, before I say any more, let's let's consider it. Either way, he was put into. Uh, he was really into being white, if you couldn't guess. So um, it turns out that a lot of the people that he brought to this place, uh, he started scamming them. And the pressure got too much, and he killed himself. So that's fun. Oh damn! Now, I wish that I wish people that like being white in America would do that sometimes. I mean, I like being white, but I'm also don't mind other people being other things. Yeah, yeah you know, I don't mind that either. I'm just saying. Uh, you know, it's, it's it's how much you know. I hate being white because I can't jump. Yeah, that's the worst yeah. part of it. Yeah, you've been yeah. oppressed by gravity. And yeah, I'm very, own, I'm very uncoordinated. Too. And your I'm own clumsy. privileged calves. Yeah. God damn it. Anyway, so he kills say, himself. Damn. What's up? Oh, no, I was just going to say, you know, jumping ain't the worst thing. I can't even dance. <laughs> Me either. Yeah, I know. Yeah. You can't dance and my penis is extremely small. I look like I have like, a seizure when I dance. <laughs> That's me, of. not you. I don't know. You probably have. You're hung like a beast. <laughs> so it was in small print then, right, Travis? Yeah, it was very, yeah, <laughs> small I- italics because it's also crooked. <laughs> It's just like went a, to the font guy and said, "Give me the micro." Yeah, yeah. A little apostrophe on it. Small sideways rice, a wild rice, if you would. Now uh, <laughs> she she's over in Paraguay for a little while longer, but then when the mom dies, she goes over. She's like, "Oh, Nietzsche, I love you." <laughs> uh, so not only did she water the Nietzsche plant, she started to curate and edit some of his work uh, into her groundbreaking, very original master race ideology. The book. The Will to Power was severely edited by Elizabeth and published, and it was later fixed in 1960 after they went over his original notes. And um, I forget who did it. I think it was a place in California um, that reconstructed it. So the Will to Power uh, post-1960 edition is accurate to Nietzsche. And before then, it's very pro-Nazi, and it doesn't make sense. And... uh, it actually has flattering comments about Elizabeth in it. That's how like gaudy she was with her edits. Where she's I have, like, oh, I have heard writing. about how she just took his fucking shit and just revised it. It's Which, like, just that one book, though. Well, yeah. Well, I'm just saying, like, wh- like imagine if you died and you're like, this is my ma- magnum condom, my magnum opus. How? Yeah, like, Dan, you're talented. Yeah. I don't want anyone to touch that. I don't want anyone to reuse my magnum condoms. Right, from small to large. That's facts. Only the sheepskin ones. Yeah, sheepskin only, please. Yeah, I mean, it's as simple as, like, when I die, tell everyone my favorite food was Dairy Queen. And then your sister taking that and changing it to his favorite food was Panera. Also, it's good, though. uh, What's up with the juice? Tom loved going to the beach, that guy. He loved it. Love going to the beach, yeah. Love that sand. Tom loves sand. I love sand. All right, um... 
Andrew, do me a favor. You know how it goes. On the show, ask me how he died. How did this complete psychopathic gentleman die? Well, thank you very much. In 1898 and 1899, Nietzsche suffered a series of strokes that removed any chance of movement or uh, speech. So she... those little glimmers of like, I wrote a good book, that stopped happening. Well, right. I mean, we when we when we did Bo Brummel, um, we talked about how when you die of syphilis, it's like a really terrible experience because you have these windows where you, you most of the time you're out of it, but there's like these windows of clarity reality. where you right. know you're crazy and like you know you're locked up and people are spraying you with like hoses to clean you off. So you're just shitting uh. yourself, like, and you have you snap into reality for a second. And then you snap out of it, and you're most likely going to die of a stroke because your brain has holes. Right. It. Is it's, it like a form of dementia or like, it's, uh, it's, what do you call it? Yeah, it's like extreme dementia. Like, like where like sometimes people with dementia will have those moments of clarity, but like, uh, yeah, I guess it's kind of like that, but, but Sheesh. worse because you're literally rotting. I can't wait till I get old. Yeah, I mean, it's it's sad, but um, I don't know. What are you going to do? He's already dead. Go so after contracting pneumonia in mid-August 1900, so he did make it to the 1900s, he had another stroke during the night of the 24th of August and died at home around noon, August 25th, at the age of 55. He's young. He died of syphilis. But uh, like I said, some contest the notion. The other theory is brain cancer. Maybe he thought too hard, gave his brain cancer. Maybe he had that 5G implanted uh, early. He was early in the vaccine yeah. wave. I yeah. see. Well, they say it's a tumor, but it's actually just a big ass muscle that he built. Right. <laughs> big ass router in his head. And as you mentioned before, Travis, uh, one symptom not only of having holes in your head, but what's brought on by mercury treatment would also be a stroke. Yeah. So. Most things are saying syphilis. People who are disgusted by sex and naughty people say, no, it wasn't syphilis. But, like, intelligent people that have banged in an ass before, they go, yeah, it's probably syphilis. Yeah. Uh, and that's that. That's Nietzsche. Very interesting man, I will say. You know? Yeah. Um, uh, sheep condom. I recommend it for yeah. if you're in the 1800s. <laughs> uh, yeah. That's yeah. yeah. so all I got to say. Have you heard of these things called podcasts? Never mind your podcast. We've just figured out a way to put cocks in places without getting our brains home. <laughs> Sign me up. Yeah, bro. Keep your cock dirty and your brain solid. That's right. That he, he was the uh, early on the emo wave, I guess you would say too. He's uh, kind of like a like I was saying before, like nihilist a little bit. Or, yeah, uh, let's let's uh, let's talk some philosophy, Tom, because we talked a lot about the holy man. But what what is nihilism, Mike? What is nihilism? Um, you just like hate everything. I feel like uh, you have, like hatred towards like think, humans and like yourself. That seems to be. I don't think it's right? so much yeah. hatred. I think it's more just a, a matter of like why you know like what's the point of things it's, it's kind of depressive but at the same time it's kind of questioning i think hatred could be a response to it but also uh looking at the negatives and everything like oh this life is just terrible it means nothingness it means that the, yeah. like we're living for nothing and these are people who have never once in their lives they're sad people who have never had a twofers at applebee's because that's what like there's enough reason there. It's not the only reason, but we can all it's, look at each other honestly and go, "That's pretty good." You need that very, twitch. Yeah, it's a very like early philosophy. I mean, there's earlier ones like Aristotle, but like in the modern sense. And what the only thing I personally think came good at, out of nihilism is existentialism, which is, I think, the best philosophy. Who gives a shit? Have fun. That's true. You're gonna die. You know, might as well do something. Yeah. Isn't that like the basis of the uh, the Church of Satan now? Just ride it out Existentialist to the end. Existentialist thought. Well, the whole thing about you know what you just said about uh, just why buy you know have fun and all that. Yeah, I mean, uh, existentialism is just uh, we're here, we exist. Do what makes you feel happy. Is Satan a bad yeah. guy? Um. Okay. Look, I think we might depends be... on who you ask. <laughs> if he tortures bad people, is he bad? Uh, that's that's another episode when we do uh, Anton LaVey, but uh, yeah, sure. 
So there are some basic ideas that need to be covered in Nietzsche shit. Like I, I talked about um, the will to power. Yeah. Do you remember that one? Yeah, you were talking about that, how it was like rewritten. So too. to simplify that one, it's kind of like this idea that if there is will, if like mankind, any one mankind wants to do something, it has to do with obtaining power. And the reason he was so anti-Christian is because of what he called the slave and the master mentality. Now, he believed that Christianity spread slave mentality, which is like a falsehood of what power is. Like yeah. kindness, right. forgiveness, all that crap. Like all the shit that's kind of annoying about Christianity when they preach like turn turning the other cheek. It's not about like being the bigger man it's the subservient idea of falling in line christianity has stemmed from slavery like truly the people who started it were slaves were slaves. slaves so they're gonna justify their behavior that they've been trained into to uh to say that that's the the higher way of being when in fact that's the problem with christianity it isn't so much like the the fact that they uh, oppress <laughs> others through means of of uh uh, uh, of their rhetoric of collecting like all these resources and um and not actually giving back and not practicing what they preach and all that crap it's like this ideology of the slave is very sick and i agree with that a hundred percent but that's also the 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 one key tenant of uh nietzsche that the nazis lashed latched onto or at least one of the one key tenants. well that and the ubermensch which they and changed the up a bit yeah yeah because yeah. yeah. um, you could easily just take slave and master you know as the master race but again you said the uh his sister really changed that shit right and uh you know like any ideology i I, like the one thing i will admit the thing i took the most out of this research is that philosophy is fucking dumb like yeah the idea of sitting there all day and thinking and thinking like thinking is fine like maybe people should think, but to be praised for thinking all day and kind of dictating like you, that's gonna kind of boost your ego. Like you said it happened to him. It's just, like the yeah, like, the stupidest people you've ever met in your life are the people who just sit there and think ideas all day and think that they have it figured out and you don't. That's like, why you need to play Call of Duty all day and not think. Yeah, numb your brain like I do. Yeah, numb it, dog. You're a delight to be around. Truly, you're a nice man. Thank you. I mean, but uh, Andrew, do you want to weigh in on any philosophies yeah. that you might know of the Nietzsche realm? Uh, well, there's a lot to cover there, but actually, can I point something out? So, during the discussion about, you know, so he was brought up with a lot of women around him, but as noticed as throughout his life, he seemed to have this aversion to women at the same time. I'm wondering if that came from the experience of being raised with women did that kind of instill that like quote unquote incel yeah. mentality in him i don't know if his mentality was exactly incel to be fair because he kind of mm-hmm. he he paid for the goods a few times it was just different back then like yeah. you, um I, it was back I, when I, uh, I think society looked at it very differently and he was like on the edge of society enough where he want to get married to bang he want to just do it right away i don't know like yeah like the idea of incel is just, it may, maybe, you know what? Fine. He's an incel. Who cares? But I think it's a good point you're bringing up uh, with the whole raised by women thing. Cause you, there, there seems to be something very inherent when someone's not with their own people, which might be a controversial statement. Yeah. You need to surround yourself with as many penises, regardless if you're a man or a woman. You yeah, can. you you can only be with men. You can only be with men that are on the set of the Man Show. Yeah, uh, yeah. the first or version. or King of Queens minus the Scientologist. Right. Um. Yeah, I don't know. It's very subtle yeah. stuff. And like yeah. as a comedy show, or should we be covering this? Yes, absolutely. Well, you know, yeah. I mean, like they like old Nietzsche said, uh, sometimes you got to lead a horse to prune juice. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes you gotta pay for sex while hugging it. Yeah, while well, hugging, yeah, well, hugging it. Um, like horse, you need to help your GI tract. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know what, what I what I mean to say though is that like you're gonna be like people tend to get off on each other if they're the same person. 
Like, if you're surrounded by lots of women, there's nothing wrong with that. But as a man, it will get somewhat tiring and vice versa. If you're around dudes all the time and none of them are funny or have anything to offer and they just kind of talk about very man-based things, it's got to be very annoying to a woman. And you're going to grow resentful of that. You need a balance. You need a little bit. You need that or syphilis. And syphilis, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> some, I mean, some people don't need it, though. Some people are different. I think from everything that we've done with all of our research, I think syphilis sounds pretty good. It does. It sounds like a good drug to have when How, you're old. So I you want like it. 10 of it. Ten, yeah. 10 days of syphilis. I would honestly. Yeah, I, I, it definitely sounds like a trip. long running high. Yeah, yeah I want to just. I want to just uh, put some holes in there. Right I'll in do the it. Brain. You want to? You guys want to inject syphilis? You want to go to the carriage carousel Let's house do down on one ten? I'm. I'm just gonna get it mail ordered to me. Just a yeah. vial. Just breathe it in. Uber eats breathe that in. shit. Right. I'm <laughs> gonna have it signed by Janet Yellen because I'm sure she has it. That's far. Yeah. <laughs> it's gonna be a vial of like black. Jisms. I'm gonna huff some gasoline. Yeah. Dang. Uh, philosophy. What? Things. There's a lot of it. Here's the thing. We're definitely gonna be underselling it, no matter how long we talk about it tonight. Yeah. Does anyone want to talk about any of the other points or have know something about Nietzsche uh, to chat um, about? Because I'm kind of over it, to be honest with you. I started. I started getting into the philosophy, and I just was like, uh, "No, thank you." Well, and then started doing research on my next person. Well, that's like uh, like philosophy back then is like the equivalent to like motivational memes now on like Instagram or Twitter. I feel like it's like the same thing to me. You think so? Well, like oh, those... from the sounds of it, they kind of stole from that. Maybe, as yeah, well. they stole. I guess they yeah. stole. Yeah. Like those yeah. guys that are like, just read one book, but every third word on every page, and you're gonna get ahead. You're gonna buy this Lambo. Yeah, like millionaire mindset daily. Yeah. Yeah. My millionaire morning routine, like that shit. Yeah, like wake up, you're a fucking lion, get shit done. I mean, yeah. based on Nietzsche's, like, his idea of power being involved very much with financial means, like, he would have loved a lot of those people. Maybe yeah. he would have found something else that would have turned him off to them if he had lived another 150 years. Yeah. But what do I know? We would have to assume that Nietzsche would be very, very friendly with PewDiePie today. Yeah. Or uh, Mr. Beast. Who is that? Uh, the Fortnite streamer that's got accused of being a rapist. There's more than one. That, yeah, no, uh, there's, uh, they're all. They're all. Yeah. If there's you're one streaming... big one now. I'm thinking no, no, he'd be no, boys no, no. with him. No, no. If you're streaming Fortnite and you're over 18 years old, you're probably a rapist. And if you're under 18 years old, go back to school. Yeah. He had like blue hair and a pink beard. Was it Ninja? No, nah, it was an older gentleman, like mid 30s. That's fine. Purple you know hair. how I feel about people with blue hair. I it's all good hair. having blue hair until you rape kids. You yeah. Know, so, so. I had blue hair. Shut it's up. Like a right up I, I'm, not, I'm not hating on blue hair. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I forgot you had blue hair. You got the blue hair group. Well, you know, I wanted right. blue hair too at one point, and they told me in Marshall I couldn't have it, so I got bleach blonde instead, and it's still a bad look. But I'm upset by the world. I'm gonna go find a horse and fuck it. Yeah, like Nietzsche well, did. Yeah, get that ve- a venom. I'm just gonna say, if mind. you're upset by the world, then you probably understand it better than anyone yeah, else. Tom. Yeah, yeah, I guess so. How's a fucking Nietzsche over here? Fuck I'm a regular Nietzsche. Listen to Dystopia. It's I'm listening to Disturbed. Getting in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I get. Uh, Tom's been practicing his fucking monkey growl. <laughs> Ooh, wah, wah. <laughs> Ooh, wah. Yeah, that's right. Nah, 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 nah. Tom hates everything. Got it. Got it. Did you say got a Seneca? Yeah, like God, is dead, da, da. God, is God is dead. God is dead. God is dead. Oh, okay. I don't know. I don't know anything. I know one thing. I, one thing I do know is that I don't think nearly as much as this guy, and I'm probably better off for it. Good. Uh, uh, Mike. Yeah, I feel like too much thinking along those lines eventually would just drive you mad. Yeah. Syphilis or not, he was. He just some. There's some good ideas with philosophy, especially in terms of the avenues he was going down. But when you just have that pooling around in your mind so much over so much time constantly that in and of itself is mind-boggling and probably drive you nuts amen moderation it's literally doing it in a fucking cabin in the swiss alps yeah just jerking yeah, off yeah in isolation time. that made it worse yeah i don't know it's i i agree 100 percent with that it's it can't be good um so with that i don't know if there's no other thoughts i think it's time to close down this show um 
Andrew, thank you very much yeah. for joining us. I'm uh, if we bored you to death with this episode, my God, I am yeah, so sorry. sorry. We'll have you on again. <laughs> I feel like I no, got no him. worries, no worries. <laughs> if I hurt your brain by no, me talking, I mean, I'm sorry. It's, it's in it's interesting stuff. Don't get me wrong. Like I've always been a big fan of in terms of like stu- not directly studying philosophy, but at least understanding the concepts. I feel bad that I haven't had more to really input into it, but also, you know, lo- my weekend was long and my brain is pretty shot by this point. I'm enjoying just sitting here and listening to you guys go and it's, it's great time. Um, no, I'd be happy to come back at some point, especially if it's on a topic I got a little bit more knowledge on. Cause then I have more to input, you know, of course. Yeah. Yeah. No, we're, we're, we're changing the show up and that's very much in the cards. Uh, Travis, what else do you have to say, sir? I want mercury injected straight into my urethra. <laughs> <laughs> That's the moral of the story tonight. And remember, it just makes you feel all warm and fuzzy. Yeah, and yeah. remember, uh, good times. Jews, Jews rule. That's what it says. On yeah, the, on my uh, <laughs> Jews are cool. <laughs> you know, as a what Jew, I'd be like afraid to, to see what it says on your butthole. Yeah, <laughs> mine says uh, pen fifteen. That says that says Arabs rock. Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just covering all my bases here. Oh, yeah. Is it just a picture just of Muhammad? You've got every orifice labeled. Yeah, yep. it's a picture of Muhammad. His That's mouth fire. is a butthole. That's amazing. He's going, uh, ooh. <laughs> Under your mustache. He had sex with children. That's he cool. did. Muhammad's <laughs> fine, though, because it's holy children. He yeah. saved them. He Mike, did. He saved him. Mike, I'm going to do a sign off. Do you want to say anything else? Um, always wear condoms. You get syphilis. I was, uh, Dude, sheepskin. <laughs> sheepskin. If you if you want to be a traditionalist, that's it. That's if, a- if you don't like using plastic, or you want to save the world. Use some sheep. Uh, it's a good guy there. Just slaughter sheep and blast yeah. away. There you go. Get some. Make a coat out of it. Right. Actually, uh, save the animals too. I'm sorry. All right. Don't fuck. Yeah, yeah sell it, never. be celibate. God's okay, watching. Just... That's that's the show. Then that's uh, that's the story. When it comes to Nietzsche, don't fuck. When it comes <laughs> to us, fuck with us. Go to yeah. patreoncom yeah. roastmortemcast Find your way over to roastmortemcast.com You know what? We haven't done a ra- we haven't seen any new ratings. We like when people are angry at us. I haven't got any clothes yeah. yet from you guys, Mike. I'm gonna strip you and beat you. I need a fucking I'm gonna need some merch. And beat you. I'm a, I can't flex it in public if I don't got it. Like, like oh, go uh, buy yeah. it like everyone else. We make no money on this. <laughs> this, at all. this show is charity at yeah. its best. Okay, so thank you very much for listening. Andrew, thank you very much again for joining us all the way from sunny Canada. Yeah. Travis, go fuck yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I'll see you all later. <laughs> I'm doing it right now, dog. I'm right, I'm right uh, I, I, see, I see Travis. God, your ancestors are watching you, Travis. Don't forget that when you stroke it. Oh, God. Oh, uh, th- Robert Every, All Lee, your ancestors are behind you cock. right now. Watch. She is big it. ass cock, Robert E. Lee. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Cobberty e. Lee. That's my grandson. Dick. That's my great great grandson. Dick, dog. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Shane. Thank you. Good night. Thank you, Shane.